Greetings, mortals, and welcome back to The Broken Pact, the mythic odysseys of Theros show on twitch.tv slash saving throw show, sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. Ooh. I am your dungeon master, or should I say your Therosian chorus for this adventure, Ruben Bressler, and these heroes are my players. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and I'm playing Astarok who's a minotaur, minotaur fighter from the Boros Legion. But now he's in uh, <clears throat> this other place, Theros. Right, so now he's in Theros, so he's a bit more of a fish out of water. Uh, but he punches good. And, uh, sure does. And yeah, that's does. what he do. <laughs> I, I was looking, I was trying to figure out where you were going to point when you said Theros, because you're like, Minotaur from the Boros Legion, who's in, I have nowhere to point. Nope, instead I, I pointed at my computer where I think of this <laughs> game. That's where Theros lives. lives. That's where, that, you know what? That's where you play Magic the Gathering Arena, and that's why you point at where Theros is. Hey, right. great um, point. I am Riley Silverman, and I play... Uh, Safia, who is a fish in water often because she is from Theros and she is part Triton and she is a worshiper of Thassa and she has a new toy that she got last week that she's very excited about. Um, it is it is the Bident of Thassa, the Dekala, and it is it is very much like somebody got me a prototype of Ray's lightsaber from Star Wars. Is that level of like I have now gotten a cool artifact that I want to play with. That's very exciting for me. So nice. uh, that's 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 what's going on in my world. Uh, hi, I'm Danielle Radford. I play Lydia. Uh, I am a swashbuckler and a human. Um, I am from Theros, and I worship Sa uh, uh, Thassa in a way that you know uh, when you say something bad about Nicki Minaj, and then like 20 people come after you on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I would be mm -hmm. one of those 20 for Thassa. I am a Thassa stan. Uh, <laughs> Thassa up and down, stand. true and true. Love it. Hey everyone, I'm Ashlyn Rose. I play a Luxodon cleric from the Celestian Conclave, and she has also found her way all the way over to another plane called Theros with uh, Starok. And uh, she's over here hanging out with uh, Sophia and Lydia. And her name is Tuturu. Tuturu! And she is a uh, larger than life, but also like happy go lucky friend of all and uh just tries to keep the peace within the group and uh with all those she we interact with and uh sometimes she has to be very creative with it as we learned last week so yeah that's right hey thanks for tuning in everybody and thanks for coming uh to join us on our story uh and also joining us on our story we've got a couple of excellent sponsors with us this season first of all hero forge Hey, everybody. With Hero Forge, you can make minis with full color options and loads of customization from combat wheelchairs to banners of war. You can make your favorite characters from all across the D&D and Magic the Gathering spectrums uh, using their Hero Creator system. You should check out HeroForge.com for more info or enter chat command Hero Forge that starts with an exclamation point, of course. I'm sure Dom will trigger that in chat right now. However, I want to say we also have a really cool set of videos coming your way very soon where some of your favorite saving throw show personalities have made some demo videos to show you just how easy it is to create a hero forge mini and so for example i walked everyone through how i made a mini for safia that is currently in route to me that i'm very excited about so uh, let's awesome. see if it arrives before the season finale it'll be a real race against time and then we'll see how it goes that's awesome hero forge and uh, yeah, I made I made a Hero Forge mini for one of my LARP characters, and um, that mini uh, I have a regular version, and then I have a version where I'm wearing jorts um, because for some reason they give you the option to wear jorts. So, so I decided, why not? why not use that? Uh, Zombie Orpheus, thank you for the hey, raid. Thanks for the raid. Hey. Hey. Starting off strong, uh, and we Shields also have up, one. Chat. That's right, Shields up. Uh, we have one other uh, sponsor, and they are of course Die Hard Dice. Hi, check out our friends at Die Hard Dice, where you can save 10% by using the code NATURAL20 at checkout. You want to use command exclamation point DH Dice in chat for links and info. Now, the code only works until the end of this month, so get on it now. And you can order our friend CD's dice set and get your 10% off, so you're like double helping friends, which is yeah. what we like. We like friendship. Amazing. This was the best intro that we've done so far. Well done, everybody. We like... I feel like we should be delaying another five minutes, but uh, 
Don't oh, don't oh. tempt the gods. You know what I mean, happened last week. You know, I, fair. I can fuck it up if you want. Yeah, it's true. I could. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what? Uh oh, on okay. it this week. Uh oh. <laughs> You can you start talking some more because your captions often get stuck on screen and we really <laughs> need to make sure that doesn't happen again. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for watching us on YouTube or listening to us uh, as a podcast. Thank you so much for that. Do us a solid and leave us a like, a comment, a subscribe, the whole nine yards. It really helps the show and the channel as a whole. You can join our Patreon now and become a part of the new Exploration Society. Your support comes with many rewards like special pins, swag, merch discounts, one-page adventures, and more. So become a part of the society and join us today. Um, I yeah. wish Dom had just written Ruben Stop Reading Now at the bottom of that to see if you would have said it out loud. Like Mr. Peanut Butter giving instructions on... <laughs> That's right. Oh, it looks like I have one more announcement. Uh, uh, Ruben, stop reading. Oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> this announcement was brought to you by calling a no-hitter before it happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that that is as good a place as any to send it over to the intro for The Broken Pact. Episode 8, Hour of Need. Tuturu, Sophia, Lydia, and Astarok are on a quest. Their mission, to convince the gods of Theros to reopen the gates and allow interplanar travel once more. The foursome began in earnest in the realm of dreams and ideals known as Nyx, and have successfully convinced several of the gods of their worthiness of their cause. When last we saw our heroes, they had just left Perforos, the god of the forge, and one of his faithful, a monk named Mikal, both of which were wonderfully played last week by Gil Ramirez. Uh, thank you so much, Gil. Uh, and after retrieving an artifact that Perforos was working on, a new bident for Thassa, the god of the sea. Now, with new armaments, thanks to the forge god, including said bident, they plan to set off for their next ordeal. But as they do so, and gather the mooring lines onto their ship, the moray. There is a crackle and a flash, and appearing from within a transportation circle, just outside of Perforos's Mount Velus abode, is a Nyxborn that Safia would quickly recognize as her child, Solea. And that is where we will begin. There is a bright flash of the of a of white on the sigil just outside of the temple, and uh, looking around, uh, most of you see a a Nyxborn, uh, um, who is uh, sort of scouring, and then sees the the moray and begins walking towards it. Um, this might. I don't know what's going on. Uh, uh, should we? I don't know. Get weapons out or? No, no, no. That's my. That's. They're my child. Oh. Hi, mom. Oh. Hi, mom. Salia, what are you? What are you doing? Um, Nix, first of all, what are you? Are you okay? Is everything okay? Yeah. Um. Uh. Not really. Um. Permission to come aboard. Of course. This is your family ship. You're always welcome. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm gonna, um, we should probably uh, get get moving. Um, uh, I'll, I'll explain on the way. Uh, if you could- On the way to where? To, to mom's, to the island. Oh, oh, okay. Um, oh, um, okay, yeah. Um, 
yeah, I, I, I'm sorry to spring this on you like this, but it's, uh, it's, it's, I think it's urgent. It's tough to know with, you know, visions and, and dreams and stuff like that. Hi, everybody. Um, hey. How, Hi. how are you? Hi. Um, what, um, you're part of the crew now? I don't know. We, oh, we just kind of half rude of me. Sorry. Walked um, under the boat my... one day. We, we had a vision. Now we're all, we just kind of go. <laughs> yeah. I'm too true. You know. I'm too true. I'm Solea. Astarok. Astarok, nice to meet you. Oh, and you haven't met Lydia. Lydia is is my is my first mate. She's my crew. She's my my friend who has been helping me out the last couple of years. So we haven't Excellent. made it back to the island, so you haven't met her. This is right. Well, hi, nice, um, nice to yeah. meet you. And Lydia puts out her hand for a handshake, um, but it's much more gentle than her normal handshake. <laughs> and I'm Solea so excited to meet you. Hand. It's very nice to meet you as well. Um, sorry to spring this on you, but uh, we should we should really get moving. Um, oh, no, of course, I'll, of course. I'll explain on the way. And okay, okay. Um, you know that from where you are to get back to the sea is pretty much due east of or due west of here. Okay. Um, but you are in Nix, so uh, yeah. So you begin moving. And Soleil will say, so um, I had a, a, a dream and uh, Alestra also had a similar dream. Um, and so, and we know how dreams can be. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. I had a, a vision where you were trapped under the ocean somehow in the material plane but like in a bubble and there was uh it was very weird there was um dark ocean ink or water or something surrounding you and but it wasn't you so much as it was the, like a version of you and i i think that that I, is dangerous and um, we tried to uh, to message uh, to to send sending to Odexes, and he was he didn't respond. I immediately fire off a message to to Odexes to my son. If, if I'm hearing that people are trying to reach him and he's not responding, I immediately fire off. Odexes, it's it's your mother. Where are you there? Are you okay? What's going on? Your 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 sibling told me that they tried to reach out to you and they didn't hear from you. Are you? Can you hear me? Are you there? Uh, and you are using sending. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and roll a d twenty for me. Okay. Let me just mark that spell. Oh, okay, it's already marked off because I didn't the wrong rush yet. So, okay. D twenty. I got a 16. Okay. What's your wisdom modifier? Plus five. All right, you're gonna you're gonna beat it then. I also okay. rolled a 16. Um, Max you, out those clerics, kids. Right. Yeah. Usually, when you send sending and send a message to someone, it comes back clear. <laughs> um, especially being a, a, a cleric of the sea the sound waves travel in crystal clear capacity. The message you receive back is staticky, garbled. Um, it's, it's distorted in some way. And it is broken and you're getting about one out of every three words. It says, mom, Trouble. Shh. Attacked. Shh. Help. Shh. And that's what you get. Okay. So, and I look back at, at uh, Solea and I go, okay, your brother, um, I couldn't make out a lot of what he was saying, but I, I, think, I think maybe the Triton City was attacked. And I think that maybe... He's, I don't know, 
it, I can reach out to his father, I guess I could try that. But if, it, if it's, I'm barely getting through to him, that's probably a, a simple, um, let's, let's get to your mother as soon as possible. Maybe she can divine something. I can possibly commune with FASA and find out what's happening, but we have to, you're right. We have to move. And I think that at this point, I definitely would probably would fire up the, the new feature that we've got the cog from, uh, from uh, Perforos, and That's right. we, we yeah. talked. We talked as a group a little bit between the shows about what we wanted this to look like. We never really landed on anything, but here's my pitch, and I'm gonna see if you all think this is a good idea. I think it should look like paddles that are like rowing the boat faster, but paddles that look like forge hammers. Like it's almost like the hammers are in the water pushing the water. Oh, I love that. I like it. I'm in. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Excellent. Just just thought of that just now, but I, I realized we hadn't talked about it since we first talked about talking about it. So I was like, okay, let me. What's a good idea? Paddles, nice. hammer paddles. Let's do, stat. Let's go. All right. So it's, um, it's got sort of a, a steamboat vibe to me now. Yeah, yeah. And it was a clockwork. It was a like gear, so that kind of makes sense. Yeah. yeah, right. So you uh, put the hammer down, uh, and you get the cog of messengers' speed going, uh, mm -hmm. equipped to um, the moray, and that is going to increase your speed as you move across uh, the surface of Nyx. Uh, yeah. It is going to be uh, probably about a day on the surface of the land of Nyx yeah. to get to the ocean before you get to the ocean of Nyx. Of course, you are, however, on the moray in the dream realm, so you can sail very, very quickly. Um, Great. Does that mean uh, yes, you will rest? get a long rest? Ooh, um, cool. and you can attune to all of your uh, new toys uh, if you so choose. Nice. Um, and uh, if there's anything else you wish to do during the day uh, as you are headed towards the sea, you may do so. I'm going to look up if there's any spells that I can use that yeah. I, have, I currently have. I will prepare spells like a good cleric. <laughs> Astarok, um, after attuning to his uh, to his molten bronze skin, uh, kind of like, I guess it's supposed to like come in a, like a jug or whatever. Yeah, it comes like in like a into... yeah, it comes in like a uh, like a Greek urn, and it looks and when you slosh it around inside, it looks a little bit like op almost like opaque oil. So uh, Astarok pours it on himself, and it kind of like goes over and coats him so that everything from his arms up through like look like it's like made of bronze he's like oh uh, yeah that, i mean i feel strong but i also feel like i'm like not wearing anything you know <laughs> boy this this is strange <laughs> and he kind of like does some poses and clang 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 that's right <laughs> uh, this is gonna take some getting used to <laughs> And you glisten like a bronze god in the starlight. He uh, he 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 throws his uh, Boros cape on over, and he's like, "Ah, oh, I mean that feels a little better." Oh, I'm still not sure this is like up to uniform regulation, but I guess nobody's really like doing an inspection or anything like that. So, uh, Solea is giving Odie scritches, um, and. Uh, approaches uh well well who where would Safia be uh right now actually um what Safia would be doing where she would be right now is probably on the the front deck of the ship and she has actually started laying out um various like objects of hers and like things that are um like things that she has of um of uh Odexes and of of like memories and like she's she's basically I'm I'm gonna do ritually cast divination but I'm just like setting it up so I have like things that are, that are important to me things that are important to him and like symbols that are important to me with Thassa and I'm trying to think of what I would have that would be worth twenty five gold pieces that would be of a um like a magical I have a I have that amulet but that's not something that would be consumed so. Um, I'm trying to think of anything that I would have on the, the only thing I think of is like, if I have like, f like food on the ship that has been provided to me by Thassa, cause I usually like, I usually eat sure. meals that she provides like fish and things that she brings to me like as a bounty basically. So I think I probably like would sacrifice some, like, I, I think what I would do is I think my version of, of sacrificing is that I'm choosing to fast for a day mm -hmm. as like a, uh, um, a, like a 
like a tribute to her, like a sure. um, penance for her to. That makes that is that is perfectly fine. And you're going to ritually cast this. Yes. Uh, so this is going to take about 10 minutes. Um, during which time uh, it looks like uh, uh, Soleya was going to try to come up and approach you, but she sees that you're in the middle of something and will wait. Um, instead, what are the rest of you doing? Uh, um, well, oh, go, go ahead. Please. Teacher is just, uh, she's probably trying to prepare whatever she can for what's about to happen. She's pr- she probably, before Sophia started ritually casting, had probably tried to talk to her and figure out, because she's not as experienced with anything over on the water, and figure out, you know, through her experience, like, what type of things would be best to prepare spiritually and, like, spell-wise, like, see what they might have in common and she might be familiar with and can kind of grok um, and might be able to cast that's similar to Sophia and try to maybe prepare those things as well. Um, to prepare for the battle ahead, possible battle ahead. Okay. Lydia? Um, So Lydia has got um, her new toys, which is uh, Marvelous Pigments. Um, And so she takes out her Marvelous Pigments and she draws like a tiny version. She's like looking over for reference, a tiny version of Odie um, in in what is now becoming uh, a very, a very wild mural. Uh, So just like a little tiny image of Odie um, just to see what happens because with the Marvelous Pigments, um, things that she draws can come to life. Right. So uh, you're working on uh, this. Let me look up Marvelous Pigments. I don't think that they will come to life, but they will come to three-dimensional form. Hell yeah. (laughs) Um. Which is, which is uh, pretty spectacular. So you're pretty sweet. painting uh, a, a, a beautiful crab and uh, a it, it's eventually like the Build-A-Bear for, for Odie. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, realistic uh, interpretation. And Soleil comes over and says, wow, that is spectacular. That is beautiful. Oh, thank you. It's just a thing that I work on. You know, I've got other uh, other shots too, but n- maybe let's not have you directly in front of these. Uh, we'll just keep you looking at Odie. I think that that's what, a better idea. What? What? In front of what? Oh, nothing. And, so, and uh, Lydia like throws herself kind of in front of the less appropriate images that are on there. Uh, <laughs> like, no, 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 it's nothing. It's good. Just keep looking at that crab. Fair. Okay. Fair enough. I will. I will do that. So how long have you, uh, how long have you been traveling with, with my mother? A few seasons now. Um, it's still, we're still learning stuff about each other. I'm still learning about the sea. I was, um, not, I'm not of the sea. Um, but I, the sea is my best friend. So I am still learning as much as I can. And of course there's no one better to learn from than to be on this legendary ship and to be rolling with Safia. So as soon as I took the chance, um, I did it. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's pretty pretty. If you're a fan of the sea, then uh, there's no one better. Nope. So you've, you, where are you from originally? Um, I'm from Melitus. Oh, city girl. City girl. Yep. Yes. Um, just uh, the city doesn't really speak to me. I don't like being on land anymore, and I never really did. Cities are so loud and dirty, and they smell. And what is with the garbage everywhere? Land I lovers know, right? just all. Oh, Throwing their garbage and their pets poop all over the place. The sea is clean and beautiful, and everywhere you look, there's fish and there's life, and it's vibrant. It's so much better than all that, you know, hard cement and stone all over the place. Yeah, it's. I mean, the sea is the sea is freedom. It's. It is gross freedom. Being in a city. No one. Are any of us within earshot for this? Sure. Astaroth just like <laughs> scowls a little bit and kind of mumbles to himself as she's bad to consider. He's like, well, cities have a lot of gold. But yeah, but maybe otherwise. someone shouldn't be so mean about tridents and bidents when he's had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were pretty, pretty hardcore on the whole bident thing, Astaroth. I mean, I, I, I've i grown up on the ocean, on the sea with, you know, with my mothers. And... 
you, you don't have to convince me that it's uh, mm. that it's a wonderful existence. Um, yeah, plus it, cities punch people. It's really like it's not great. It's true. <laughs> yeah, they're dangerous. <laughs> Hiding behind corners, no corners to hide behind, really, in the ocean. Nothing but clear yeah. horizon. I'll find one. Oh, that's in funny. the ocean. There are lots of corners to hide behind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How, so, are you, forgive me for asking this, but um, are you planning on staying here? Um, staying here on the ship? On the ship. I, I only ask because I know that, you know, the moray, you know, the crews of the moray, they come and go, um, and... You know, it. People get the itch to move on sometimes, and I know that my my other mother that you haven't met yet, Alestre, she's more of a homebody. She's more of a stay on an island, it, uh, surrounded by the sea, but less about the dangers that are out there. And you know, I was just curious about what you thought you would, you were, you, you your future would hold. Well, I plan to stay on the sea no matter what. The The dangers of the sea call to me. That is where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be where Thassa leads me. And so far, Thassa has not done me wrong. Um, so the sea is, this is my home. And the moray is, it's my home. And Sophia is my captain. And I don't see that ever changing for me. I don't want to go back on land. Um, land is rough and there's little bits of it that are coarse and they get everywhere. And I'd rather just be in the oh, sea yeah. <laughs> where everything is smooth and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I definitely, I definitely feel that. I appreciate that you're keeping her company. It, it, there, there have been points where she's been, you know, lonely out here. So I'm glad that she has someone that she can depend on. Thank you. I'm glad that I have someone I can learn from. What's your story, you two? You don't seem like uh, seafaring types, per, per specifically. Yeah, we, we just kind of do whatever we got to do, you know? Oh, it's like regular run-of-the-mill adventurer types? Yeah, I, I mean, all right. So the layout, out, simply... We started out in a city that goes on forever in every direction, and uh, there was this thing mm. where somebody killed somebody who uh, Tuturu knew uh, and was very close with. Uh, yeah, sorry, that suddenly sounded a, a little um, uh, not reverent enough, but uh, didn't I don't know. We, we figured out who did it, and uh, that ended up getting us these tattoos, which led us go to different worlds, and uh, this is, a, what, I think the third world we've been to, and uh, so now we're here, riding around on a boat, talking to gods. So yeah, standard adventurer stuff, basically. Yep. That's a lot. And now yep. we're talking yes. to you. Yes, you are. Do you want to fill us in on what, what's going on um, with everything here? Like, Right now, we're supposed to be talking to some gods, but it sounds like something yeah. crazy is happening well, to yeah. your so, brother. Well, um, yeah. I have a, I have a, a half sibling um, named Odexes. Odexes uh, lives with uh, his his father um, in a, a Triton city. Um, I actually don't personally know the their the Triton city's name. It's not really like my my bag. I hang out with uh, my mother Alestre, uh, where I, I'm learning oracle mancy and um, uh, fortune uh, favoring and other magics like that. Um, and sometimes we receive omens. Um, and uh, the omen that we received, we received a similar dream in which uh, we saw uh, Sephia or a version of Sephia trapped. And we both interpreted that to mean a piece of Sephia was trapped. And the only piece of Sephia that was trapped or mm. that could be trapped in any way, shape or form uh, on the material, in the material world was Odexes. And so we started, we, we did everything at our disposal. 
uh, mom uh, tried to scry. That didn't work. I tried to send a message. That didn't work. And so we uh, found found Safia uh, at Mount Velas with you all and figured that, you know, we needed to figure out what was going on. And Safia is is nothing if not powerful and uh, able to solve big problems. And so it's, uh, it's nice that it's nice that I get to see mom. Uh, it's nice that, you know, she she doesn't come around a ton, but that's because she's an adventurer. You yeah, know, we uh, we understand that she, her way is to be constantly moving and changing. Um, Would anyone want to hurt uh, your brother? Like, is that? I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't know the politics of your family, but with the stuff we're doing, it could be any of the gods who don't want us to do what we're doing. I mean, hey, the best way to get to somebody is, you know, going after their family. <laughs> Not that I would do that, but, you know, I know people. That's interesting. Yeah, I hadn't considered that. I mean, I know that the the Tritons sometimes go to war with each other. Sometimes there are pirates that uh, that they get on their bad side. Um, this felt much more. This felt different in some way. This felt as if there was some sort of divine intervention uh, that had pr prevented oh. the uh, prevented us from communicating. So, if it has something to do with you all and something to do with Sephia, that is unfortunate. But good that she's here now and we're yeah, well, on our way hey if, if you if there's a problem going on obviously you come to the right place i mean we've seen your mom just like boom lightning people explode no question and i'm pretty good at like axing people like quite good actually and and uh Tuturu, i mean she's got a hell of a hammer and and uh and can heal the hell out of people <laughs> things like that and, and lydia oh man for a while she wasn't hitting people with that sword, but then when she started doing it, uh, yeah, yeah, no, with the punches and stuff. But you know, man, she's gotten real good at it. Well, I'm, I'm just glad that you're all here to help. Mm -hmm. I think, I place. think, uh, I think, I think uh, my mom's almost done. I'm gonna go check in. Uh, Safia, you complete your divination. Um, you, your magic and an offering you put in contact with a god or a god's servants. You ask a single question concerning a specific goal, event, or activity to occur within seven days. The GM offers a truthful reply. The reply might be a short phrase, a cryptic rhyme, or an omen. Okay. How do I save my son? The words echo out of your mouth and intermix with the ideal and dream stuff of Nyx and surround you and swirl and become a vision. And the vision shows the surface of uh, the Siren Sea as you fly very quickly just over it and then take an abrupt turn straight down into the depths and the light fades but as you approach some sort of glowing light source you see that there is a um orb a spinning orb of water and and uh bubbles uh inside of which are uh odexes and several other tritons that you see holding weapons and fending off uh, what is outside of the bubble. And outside of the bubble, you see glimmering occasionally gold masks um, of various shapes and sizes and different types. And uh, a voice of, uh, of your god, Thassa, comes into your mind and says... Enemies abound, and there are some who do not wish to see you succeed in your journey, in your mission. I am sorry, but some of the gods might 
try to take it personally. It looks like perhaps Erebos is trying to get you to stop. Fortunately, he only sent a paltry force. But you're well on your way to putting an end to this particular threat. And you pull back from the scene and your vision returns to you. I, I think that you see Safia suddenly on the deck spit up a bunch of water as if she's been underwater. Um, but we've been on land still. We haven't been on the ocean. And like she just... <laughs> Soleil will come over and, and comfort. Are you all right? You, what, what, what was I, it? What did you? What did you see? I, uh, Odexes and his father and and others. I, I just re I repeat the vision that I saw, so that people don't have to listen to me repeat what they just heard say. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm. um, re the, an army of the dead looked like returned, but they were working for Erebos. Um, they they had him. They had his father. His father is a prince. I can't believe they managed to get him, but they did. Well, that's well, that's much more information than we had previously. I'm, I'm. We have to go to the, well, siren, the siren Sea on the material plane. So as soon as All we right. get back to the ocean, I'll see if we can. I, I'll try using the the smuggler's banner to flip us to because I don't. I don't think we have time to sail all the way to the world's edge and back. So I will. Oh, you're gonna ugh. you're gonna jump planes. What hey. else am I supposed to do? It's a, it's it's it's, okay. it's, your, it's your brother. No, you're not wrong. I just know that that can be dangerous if you're not at like a specific crossing point. Um, but you, you're absolutely right. I mean, and if anything can, I mean, the more I can take it, I'm sure. Just let us know what you need us to do, Captain. You, I mean, we can make the jump, but if we die in the process, then we ain't going to be helping anyone. So how far are these crossing points? I mean, didn't they say that there were places that weren't all the way at the edge of Nyx, places that were that we, you could get through through the different planes? Are any of those close by? Uh, I mean, wait, we there's can some die? sort of tree that grows through everything, maybe... Uh, Tutu and I could uh, use a little bit of the magic we got to like try and get everyone through. It's uh, one of these these little uh, I don't know hole places. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the, I mean I I don't know if there are any crossing points that can take the moray. Um, but I, I I'm sure that we can we can figure something. I mean I'm sure the moray can take it if if we need to if we need to. Just, you know, get, and Wait. we need to get to where, we need to get to Odexes. We've already traveled to Nyx with the Moray. We can travel out of Nyx with the Moray. Absolutely. It's just a little trickier when you're at a, when you're not at a specific location. All right. Uh, is is there someone nearby that you know of? It's like, I can jump us to a location and we can travel through if that's what we need to do. But it's your brother. We have to get to him. I, I am a, I'm on board with, with your plan. I think that we have to take the risk. There isn't anything nearby that would qualify uh, to be able to take. I mean, we could transport us, but leaving the moray behind in Nyx seems like a even worse idea. No, I can't. All right. I mean, if that's what so, we got to do, it's what we got to do. Show me which are, hatches we're battening down and let's, let's, let's make it happen, Cap'n. You are fast approaching the the shore uh, or what would be the shore if you were on the material plane, um, you know that uh, the island upon which uh, um, uh, Alestra lives is just off in the ocean. Um, what preparations would you like to do as you uh, get ready? Um, I think I'd probably like battening down the hatches essentially like whatever whatever can be um stabilized or put in place somewhere i'm doing that um okay 
Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I, I'm, I'm probably warning. Uh, I'm probably giving a lot of instructions to Astrock and Tutsuru about like things to hold on to and things to do to like stabilize yourself and things like that. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. This is this is a thing that I think Sophia probably knows a little more than Riley does about sure. like how to secure a ship that is being warped through planes. Absolutely, <laughs> you do all the preparations needed. Right, I'll help you out a little bit. We can just encompass yeah. that. I will I'm, looking, I'm also looking at the names of Greek cities so that I can give a name to this Triton city that I never named in my backstory. Oh, um, <laughs> works works for me. Um, yeah. So we know who the captain is, um, and we know who the first mate is. I do need one of you to be the bosun and one of you to be the quartermaster. The bosun provides technical advice to the captain and crew and leads repair and maintenance uh, efforts. The quartermaster plots the ship's course, relying on knowledge of nautical charts and a study of weather and sea conditions. <laughs> I mean, I could give advice. <laughs> Neither of us... <laughs> Neither of us have been on a sea. We're from a plane uh, without yeah. water. It's a little, it's a little um, bit less than ideal, but this is who you have. Okay. Um. Well, I am wise. Uh, that is probably going to be better as the quartermaster. Um, I'll be a quartermaster. Uh, and the bosun leading repairs, obviously being strong, is is helpful there as well. So sure, we'll say, if one we'll piece of wood breaks, I can take it and put take both sides of it and just push it together real hard. And if it Absolutely. goes back together, then that would be great. Otherwise, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> yep. So you are fast approaching the uh, the edge where you know that you will be uh, back on the ocean if you use the uh, the magical banner aboard the moray, and you are now over water. So well. Sophia was going over instructions with me. Uh, Tuturu would have definitely given her some some guidance as well saying you know i've watched you over these last couple days of being able to travel over the sea with you and while i am still deathly terrified of everything below this moving liquid being with you on this boat i have never felt more secure and i completely trust you and what we can do here so i have faith in you and we can do this excellent and you have guidance So you uh, give that pep talk, and you are full steam ahead. The hammer oars are uh, churning away, uh, leaving bits of dream cloud in your wake. Um, and would you like to attempt to jump? Looks like it's jumping time, right? Yeah, mighty, mighty jumping time. Right. I was asking I was asking Jake and chat if you wanted to name the underwater city because oh, okay. I, I, <laughs> that's a good idea. He just donated very generously, so I thought I would reward him by letting him name Perfect. part of the show. Uh, sure. uh, okay, the name of the city is uh, is that is that pronounced uh, Chalcis or Calcis? It's C H A L C I S. All right, you are on your way to to Chalcis. Oh, we got my... rated too while we're at it. Hey, welcome. And with us, a sea of oh, it's dolphins. It's the critical calcus. misses yeah, follow us. What was it pronounced as? It's Calcus. Calcus. You are mm -hmm. on your way to Calcus. Nice. And as you uh, activate the banner, um, you feel the world sort of suck into each other and spread out of each other like an explosion under the water. You're imploding and exploding at the same time. The ship oh. spins like it's in The Wizard of Oz, and in the back of your mind, you hear the voice of With Wherewithal, who says, Sophia, taking the moray from Nyx to the mortal realm. There's no earthly way of knowing which direction <laughs> we are going. There's no knowing where we're rowing or which way the river's flowing. But Parvarus keeps on rowing. <laughs> is a hurricane a blowing? Not a speck of light is showing. So the danger must be growing. <laughs> Are the fires of hell blowing? This is, amazing. is the grizzly reaper mowing? <laughs> yes, the danger must be growing. For the rowers Ooh. keep on mow rowing. And they're certainly not showing any signs that they are slowing. 
<laughs> she Cheers. is. Were that two toasts put together? Because I think and that's what it looked like. That's what it sounded like. How fake drink to that? That was yes. fantastic. And you uh, feel a little jostled and shaken. And as you appear in the mortal realm, the boat <sighs> appears 60 feet above the surface of the ocean. Sorry, sorry, Astarok. I need. No. I need. Um, can I respond? Yes, you can. <laughs> can I cast a spell? Sure. I want to cast. Let's see if I can. Where is it? You prep featherfall. No, but I did cast control water. Okay. Ah. Ooh. And okay. I'm. I'm gonna. So I'm gonna look down and I'm gonna be like, okay. I hope I. I hope I listened to her right. Ah! Okay. Uh, and I am going to see if I can. <laughs> well, that's not as much as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> as I say, can I cause it rotter to raise? Because um, I can read it at Rect Flow. Yep. I can part water. I can whirlpool. Sure. Um, I'll let you use this to raise the water up a little bit so that you uh, are closer to the surface effectively. Yes, I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay. So you lean over the edge and you pull the water up to meet and I'll reduce the damage. Um, okay. I, I think seeing what Tuturu is doing, I am now also going to cast control water to try to raise it <laughs> even a little bit higher than what she, I'm just, I'm like okay. supplementing her spell. Cause that is like a, Sounds good. it's a real good, it's a real common spell for me there. So, <laughs> so uh, I've, re I have reduced it. Uh, so you're only about 40 feet from the surface now. You're trying to pull up a huge amount of water and you do make a bit of a swell to be able to catch the boat. Um, I need everybody to make dexterity saving throws as the boat yeah. smacks into the ocean and jostles you to a side. Because you said we are originally 300 feet, right? No, you... 300 60. feet. 60. I thought you... Oh, 60. I thought you said 300 feet. No. you can, So control water can control like 300 feet, I think. I think you can draw a hundred feet, so I think between yeah, two of yeah. us, but oh, okay, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I think, you, I think you, can, you can flood by great, about three great. feet, so I think we got about yes, we got about yes. forty right. feet. And so. you're trying to catch a, a like a sixty foot long boat, yeah. so yeah. I'll say that I'll say oh, it reduces great, great. it by ten feet each time. All right, nice. You got a, well, it, raises it raises it by twenty. It raises it by twenty, 20, 20 feet, feet each time. time. The spell does. Nice. The uh, for control water mm -hmm. raises. 20, 20 feet, feet for flood. flood. Mm -hmm. For flood. So it's just like yeah. a column of water that like raised up to catch us kind of deal. Yeah. Oh, cool. Right. So it would normally raise the section 20 feet, but you're spreading it out over a wider area because the ship uh, is 20, okay. feet, 20 feet wide and 60 feet long. So instead of raising a 20 by 20 foot square 20 feet, you're oh, raising a 20 oh. by 60 foot area. I thought, 10 feet. Feet. I thought it was 100 feet of water. Like I thought it was a, cu thought it was a 100 feet cube of water. It caused the water level of all standing water in the area to rise by as much as 20 feet. If the area includes the shore, water spilling over into dry land. Use an area of, in a large body of water. You create a 20 foot tall wave that travels from one side of the area to the other and crashes down. No, no so, so above, above that. that. Until, Until the spell ends, you control yeah. any freestanding water inside an area you choose that is a cube up to 100 feet on a side. side. You can choose it on a side. from any yeah. of the following yeah. effects when you cast this spell. Okay. I will say that that that, that reduces it to I'll, I'll reduce it to half total. So instead cool. of sixty feet, it's thirty feet, um, which that's is that, that's, that's sixty that's times two of us combined. Yeah, sixty times twenty okay. times thirty is is many square feet. Yes. So let's see, Sounds sixty good. times twenty. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Quick math. That's a good compromise. 30, Thirty-six thousand square feet of water is is moved in a moment to to try to allow you to gently set the boat down. Um, yeah. How yeah. how a whole fishing village is suddenly unable to fend for themselves because all the water. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. What Somewhere does, Milana is like? I did it. I did it. Um, so the tsunami uh, that ensues from this like destroys a small village. Oh no! Go ahead and tell me. Uh, let's figure out what the weather's like. Go ahead and roll a d20 real quick. Okay. Who wants to roll that? I, I rolled it already. I rolled a 12. Okay. Uh, it is not super calm, but it's not storming. It, it's, it's like Crap. pretty reasonable waves I am um, as you 
crash into the into the ocean. How did the dexterity uh, saving throws go for everybody? I got okay. a ten. I got a six. I got a fourteen. I got a sixteen. Uh, so the sixteen will save. So you will take half of uh, eleven. So you take five. Everybody okay. else takes eleven bludgeoning damage. Ooh. And through you were on the edge of the boat. I'm going to say that you tumble over the side. Uh, Lydia and Okey Astarok, dokey. you are prone. Safia, you're right there. Mm -hmm. so you're seeing Tutu about to fall off to the side. I'll let you have a, a, a moment to, uh, to, to respond to that. Well, first of all, as we're coming down, even though I'm even though I'm taking damage, I look awesome doing it because I'm like almost like Absolutely. surfing down on the boat. Because Sophia's 100%. like, this is not her first rodeo with with fun jumps with this feature, so she's kind of at it. But the second that Tutaru goes overboard, Sophia is just like on it and just like die like like swan dives on it into the water. This is her natural <laughs> element, and uh, and now because of the cool features that I have with my my Dekela, my my Biden of Fasa, I get to move sixty feet in the water. So it's full on like Aquaman is like poof, the water. And so I am I am after Tutsuru like a jet. Like, I am I'm probably in front of her at this point because she was falling at whatever speed she was, but I'm going 60 feet a second. So I am. Sure. Yeah. And you, you probably swim pretty fast because you're a Biton, right? Wow. Oh, 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 wait, you're you're a Triton. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I hate. I think I hate, that's a little better. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. Well, to be fair, oh, Astro, that was a you. long walk. I'm only, I'm only half Triton, so I'm actually only a Biton. So that okay. makes you like a, a 1.5 or yeah. something like that. <laughs> I hate, I hate. But you did just hear that I have both a, a baby mama and a baby daddy, so I am at least a Biton. Um, so, all right, um, there you go. So you are just barely off the edge, uh, off to the side uh, of of the uh, the boat, maybe ten feet overboard at this point. Um, and so you and uh, Tuturu are both uh, in the water. And while you're in the water, uh, Safia and Lydia, since you're still on the boat and you both know what the what the um, what the sound is, you can hear the telltale noise of a leaky vessel. Wee. As the damage from falling hit the boat as well, there are eleven leaks in the boat mm. because I rolled eleven damage. We're gonna roll initiative, and then you're gonna see if you can. Yes. Uh, no, since continue, I'll, I'll wait till you're done. I, I, have, I have a thing for you. No worries. So, uh, the 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 ship or the boat is in the waves. Um, there are leaks, there are active, there's active damage to the boat. Uh, the hull has a hundred hit points. It has taken 11. Uh, and I'm going to basically deal it damage until the thing is fixed. And if it hits zero, that's going to sink the boat. Um, but it's at 89 right now. And every, every one you repair means less damage that it'll take. Safia, you were going to say something? How's my child? Oh, uh, okay. She is. They, she took, a, she took eleven. Took, sorry, they they took eleven, um, and they are also prone, but they are doing fine. Okay, because they're they um, should be at least they're part Triton, so I don't know how that they're like they're like a quarter probably or less. I don't know what they're yeah. how they, they're they smacked into the physics as opposed to into the water. Okay. So uh, I will use uh, Odie's. Uh, mini here to represent uh -huh. Stelea. You okay. call a quarter triton a slighten. <laughs> I can't. I can't anymore. Um, so go ahead and uh, uh, roll initiative, everybody. Okay. I rolled. Oh, not bad. Uh, and I'll roll for Solea as well. Oopsies. I put the name Ooh. of that city in my notes before I forget about it. Right. I got a 17. All right. I got a 20. I also got a 20. Dirty 20, not a natural 20. Sure. And add turn. Okay. Um, and uh, so Solea got a 19. 
Uh, Astarok, you said you got a 20? I got a 17. A 17. Um, Lydia? Uh, 20. 20? Lydia got 20. Uh, Thea? 20. 20. And but I think Lydia would go before me because I think, I think Lydia has a higher dexterity than I do. Okay. Um, and two true? Uh, I got a one. A big old one. Excellent. Oh, wow. oh no. Um, and then I'm going to add a turn here. Um, By the way, don't forget to real concentration, Riley. I passed mine with an 18, so I am still controlling the water. Hmm. Oh, okay. I thought we'd already... Okay, cool. Good to know. Let me roll mine. Thank you for All the right. reminder. You're yes, welcome. Thank you. Um, um, so I rolled a... For concentration check, um, I rolled... Is that a saving throw or just a con? It's a constitution, and then it, the DC is 10 or half the damage you take in, whichever is higher. Right. Okay, so for me, I rolled a 12, and I took 5 damage, so I'm fine. You're fine. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, and so there are leaks in the boat, and things need to get fixed. Uh, top of the round. Two people who can fix them are in the water right now. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds top like around. a job. I got an idea. Lydia, uh, you can also... Lydia, you're also topside, so you can look around and see if there's any uh, uh, anything around as well, if you want to. Great. Um, well, I'm going to focus on the boat. So I go, okay. um, I go to the leaks, and I pick out my marvelous pigments, and with <laughs> those, hey. I start drawing over, almost like tracing um, where the leaks are, pretty perfectly, hopefully, um, so that I can just take that 3D piece and slam it in um, Lego style. Perfect. <laughs> go ahead and roll a performance check for me to see how good your painting is. Okay. Oh, baby, it's 25. Nice. 25. Yeah. You find uh, three leaks that are right next to each other, and uh, you're able to tic-tac-toe those together, making a beautiful, like, cartoon, like, Wile E. Coyote cartoon board right over top of the three leaks. Three of them are down. Um, and th and now you are below deck as well, as this was in the hull. Um, the other leaks you can see are below decks, and they're at various points down here. Um, how's the lighting uh, below decks, by the way? Uh, Seth, um, Seth probably better than normal because there's, there's light coming through holes in the side of the deck. That's, that's <laughs> fair. Um, but do you have like a lantern hanging, or is there a continual flame, or anything like that down there? I probably would have put the flames out before I jumped the ship into a dangerous jump. I think that sure. would probably have been a thing we did as part of the whole preparing okay. ship thing. So much as, much as I would love to give everyone that thing, I feel like that's a thing we all would have realized. I think like, I'm pretty sure Tutu and Ashfog would be like, hey, maybe not the fire though? What if not, what if not the fire? What if not the fire? <laughs> so uh, Lydia, you jump down the hole into the hold and you the, the sun is shining at an angle that you can see these three. Um, you can't see the rest, but you can hear them. Okay. Uh, you don't have dark vision, right? Um, I have uh, goggles of night. Oh, so you do oh, have yeah. dark vision. Yeah, okay. so yeah, yeah you... dark vision to a range of 60 feet. Yeah. Having said that, I bet you there's no lanterns on the ship anyway, because Sophia and Lydia can both see in the dark, and so they yeah. wouldn't really need them, and they probably would think it was a disadvantage. Unless, unless we put them up for Tuturu or Astarok, I think normally we would go without them because it'd be a strategy thing for us if right. someone came on the ship while we were sleeping. Perfect. So sense. yeah, you are able to uh, plug up three of the holes, and with your goggles on, you can see where more of the holes are located in the ship. Next up, Sophia. First of all, I want to say a shout out to Jake, because apparently Calchas is the name of an actual Greek uh, naiad, a water nymph. Oh, so that was cool. a really great, great choice. Awesome. And we idea. also learned from Dom that it, it actually translates into English as underwater bill. So that's that's the name. <laughs> um, <laughs> tracks. Uh, tracks. So, OK, um, I, I am I am in full on rescuing my friend mode. So I don't know how far I am from two through at this point, but I am I'm coming after her to try to slow her descent. Or, or push her up the water a little bit sure. more. So that, that is what I am doing. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check for me to okay. just, I mean, you're, you're a pro at diving off of the ship into the sea. 
Yeah, how's a, how's a, a 24 looking for you? <laughs> yeah, you are a beautiful swan dive directly overboard. You find two Taru and uh, you're both next to each other on the surface of the water, 10 feet from the ship. Uh, okay. the, the bow of the ship is an, uh, uh, probably 10 feet above you. Okay. Um, I am going to use my action to reach out and grab Tuturu by the arm and start pulling her towards the ship. Um, and then again, I have 60 feet of movement. So whatever I have, except if we're about 10 feet away, I would get her to the ship and kind of like make sure she's stable so she can pull herself back onto the ship. Okay, great. You are next to the ship. You can grab one of the the whole the line holds on the side, uh, whatever rope or or ladder or anything that's on the that's typically hanging off the side when you're sailing, um, and yeah, you're able to do that. But I I am staying in the water because I my plan for the next few rounds is, is to swim around the boat looking for holes to patch up. But okay. uh, I'm letting I'm just making sure Tutoru is safe because as much as I care about my ship, I'm it's not it's not a I would let my friends drown situation. So exactly. I, I'm yeah. not, I'm, I don't I don't I actually don't know that until this moment if Tutoru knows how to swim out of character, like in character or nope. out of character. <laughs> so I am I am I'm letting I'm I'm making sure she is okay. And then once I know that she is okay, now I'm on total ship save mode. Okay. Even though she's part manta ray? <laughs> hey, haven't tried it. We'll see. Yeah, that's um, true. We are now at uh, initiative count 20, losing uh, ties, which means that the boat is going to take damage equal to the number of leaks that are left. And the boat continues to take on water. Uh, next up is Astarok. Okay, oh, I'm so... Sorry. sorry, before Astarok, my apologies. Soleia uh, is going to take a, uh, a rope... Uh, tie it to the mast and drop it uh, over towards uh, Safia and Tuturu uh, to aid you in climbing back up. Now it's Astarok's turn. Okay, so um, Astarok sees that things are broken and need repairing, and he's like, all right, okay, time time to do boats and stuff. Uh, this uh, It's supposed to repair things, equipment. Uh, is there, there's no skill that's like the equivalent of repair in... Mindy? Oh, there certainly is. Uh, is and you're, yeah, and you're the bosun. So uh, go ahead and make a, I believe it's a straight up strength check. Okay, Morning. so the way Astarok is going to do this is almost exactly like he said he would repair something earlier, which <laughs> he will find a place where like the wood is splitting and maybe mm -hmm. a, uh, a one of the boards has like come dislodged and he's just going to like grab it and just pull it back into the right place. Come on, Wood! Be where you're supposed to be! <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and make a strength check. <laughs> Alright. Now that I've acted out the, the action yes. of the whole thing. Uh, strength check! Boom! It is a 17. Easy peasy. You are able to plug up one of the holes. You find some uh, some spare wood that you keep for just such an occasion uh, down in the hold. You're down there with Lydia. Uh, can Astarok uh, see in the dark? Not super well, no. Well, you use your echolocation and you hear where there is a leak and you're able to nail it in. Uh, and plug one of the holes. Yeah, he, he he plugs it up, and it starts to leak a little bit again, and he turns and scowls at it, and he's like, stop it! And it stops leaking. And he's like, I don't know how that worked, but... Huh. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Tuturu, it's your turn. All right, so I imagine when Tuturu fell in the water, like, she gets tangled in her ears because they're so big, and there's nothing to hold them back now. So she's kind of flailing around for a little bit. It's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna drown. I don't know what's happening. Until she feels Sephia, like, grab her. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, oh, oh. And then she goes up and finally gets water or air. And she's like, oh, okay, okay, we can do this. And she'll climb back up onto okay. the boat. Get uh, out you of the you have the rope for help, so go ahead and make an athletics yes. check at advantage. Cool. I will do that. Athletics check at advantage. Okay. So I rolled a 16. All right. Easy peasy. You're back on the boat. And uh, Soleia uh, also aids you in, in camp coming back on board. <sighs> Thank you, Soleia. All right. Of course, of course. Let's get some of this water off of here. Oh, and then yes. I'm gonna 
continue to channel my control water and I'm going to use the uh, redirect flow part of it. And for this, I can cause flowing water in an area to move in a direction I choose, even if the water has to flow over obstacles, up walls, or in an other unlikely direction. The water cool. in the area moves as you direct it, but once it moves beyond the spell's area, it resumes its flow, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I'm going to take um, the flow probably, yeah, wherever I can see it right now yep. and just phew, try to get it to stop going through the holes. Okay. So you want to like push it. So so uh, Aster, Ock, and Lydia, you feel the water level that was coming up to your calf begin to go down a little bit. B as... By the way, on the inside, this is the explanation for why that leak stopped that Asterok scowled at. <laughs> yes! <Okay. laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Asterok nice intimidated the hell out of that leak. <laughs> and, it, and the water went, sorry, sorry, we're leaving. Out the way we came in. And uh, the control water that Tuturu is using is pushing uh, them out. Um, I will say that uh, that will double the number of uh, leaks fixed the next time that leaks are fixed. Hmm. Top of the round, Lydia. Okay, so Lydia just goes to the next, um, how about how many leaks are, are around her? I mean, she can see all of them, but- You can see all of them. There's, a, there's, a, there's seven total left. Okay, is it feasible that I would be able to paint all of seven or? Probably not. Go ahead and make an investigation check for me. Oh, Lydia's not smart, y'all. As you look around to see the best groupings of holes in the ship. Well, that's a six. Six. I mean, you see two of them near each other. You think you could get two of them. <laughs> Great. So I go over to two of them. And again, I paint with uh, my, my marvelous pigments. And uh, that creates the 3D shapes that plug the hole. And because the water is being pushed out as well, that two doubles to four. So you nice. actually are able to take care of four of the leaks as you uh, paint even more of the ship back into perfect health. Yeah, that's right. Take well, that leak. Perfect health as it pertains to the moray, which is, of <laughs> course, a patchwork of mendings and, and boards covering up holes from many decades. It is a beautiful ship with a brilliant tapestry of my family. <laughs> It yes. absolutely is, and this is, scars are just tattoos with stories, is what right. I say. Um, next up is They're Cesfia. not scars, it is art. Um, I'm, <laughs> okay, since I'm in the water and I can move pretty quickly, I, I want to make, I guess, I, don't, I, I guess probably a perception or investigation check, you can tell me which, but I'm looking for leaks that I don't think can be fixed from the inside of the ship. Great, go ahead and make a... Um, investigation check for me okay that is a 16. okay you do notice that there appears to be a, like a crack in the the very back of the ship aft corner um that doesn't look like it could be easily painted over or mended or or boarded up in any way and it's sort of leaking through the 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 um uh, where the caulking would be in your bathtub, right? It's sort of okay. cracked a little bit right there. I'm trying to think of what I can do then, because if I can't mend it, I don't... Okay, my you plan could, was to... You could probably mend it from the outside. Okay. So, because mending takes a minute to cast, so that's why I wanted to... Know, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't, like, wasting resources by being... So, if this one needs to be mended, then I am going to swim over to it, and I am going, and I, I think maybe like before I, I think I, before I go underwater, I think I shout up to the crew on the boat of like, I have to hail something underwater at the aft. So fix the other stuff. And then I dive back down underneath the water and swim over to it. And then I put my hand on it and cast mending. So I'm basically out of commission now for the next, for the rest of combat, because I am now at least for a minute. So for the next, the next sure. 10 rounds. Now that you're underwater, make a perception check for oh, me. Oh no! Oh no! Yay. Oh no! <laughs> okay. Well, that's my. That's a, that's only a twelve. Okay. Good to know. Okay. So you're mending. Yeah. Doing the doing the mending thing. Awesome. Um. Next up is uh Solea. Solea is gonna uh. 
here, the orders. I mean, Soleil can't really do. So what's Soleil's magical uh, acumen? What what is their uh, area of expertise? Um, I mean, I didn't give I didn't give them a class, but I think they're probably at the closest thing they probably would be like is like either a nature cleric or a druid because I kind of modeled their mother after Cersei okay. and Cersei okay. had like an island and she cast spells and like like yeah. did like potions and things like that. So okay. I think the closest thing to that in the D and D um, archetypes would be either a druid or a nature cleric. Okay. So Leia is going to so look... I would say may, maybe a nature cleric who were in Thassa is still her focus, but she's like the nature side of, of Thassa instead of the, um, mm. the the Tempest like I am. Okay. So Leia, in that case, is going to uh, investigate the edge and move around. Uh, and when they get to the, uh, the prow of the boat, they call out, uh, you had a... There was a maidenhead on the boat, right? Yeah, it's your grandma. It's gone. Ah! She's gone. It broke. No. She's gonna be so mad at me. <laughs> um, maybe it's in. Th uh, mm -hmm. I don't see it. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't see it on the surface of the water. Okay, I'll look for it, but I, I kind of can't right now. Okay. Um, I'm a little busy. Um, All right. Uh, I, and I, I can't really fix this. Um, okay. And then at initiative count, uh, there's going to take three more damage. And now it's Astarok's turn. Okay, um, Astarok's going to keep on trying to repair things. Okay. Uh, is there any other skill he could use to Pitch something repair to me. better? Okay, you know what? Astarok is going to use... Uh, Astarok is going to go, All right, okay, think like a ship. Think like a ship. Where would I be leaking? And he's going to try and use insight, but use fighter's insight. Okay. There you <laughs> go. By using his, uh, his big old, whatchamacallit, his, axie yeah. thing. Yes. If I were a leak, if I were a ship, where would I be leaking? Where yeah, would ahead. I be leaking? Go ahead uh, and roll that for me. Okay. I feel so, like I'm going to say, I think that that's justified for Astarok because yeah. I think he is a strategic fighter. I think he would know what a structure's integrity would be like, as he would know as a soldier where he would want to hit something in order to damage it. He doesn't think about it like that, but that is the like intuition that kicks into my. Oh yeah. He's like he is. Right. He is going. If I was trying to take egress on a ship, where would I? <laughs> yeah. It's where like would be the best place, place to break this place thing? Right. Yeah. It's like finding. An, it's like finding uh, the weak point in a phalanx. It's yeah. exactly if the I same. To break it. I know. If, if I thought if this I want ship to unbreak it, I'll undo that. If I thought right. this ship had information and I had to shake it down. What would, I, what would I better rough this ship up? What would I do for it? Go ahead and roll insight for me, Astro. Exactly. So it'll be fighters, insight. Fighters insight. Then yeah. I will add extra. So normally it would be uh, plus four, or just be plus four, because my regular. Sweet. I rolled an eight, but uh, I also <clears throat> get. Uh, basically four more than that. Instead of wisdom, I'm using that. So I got 12. Okay. So you think real hard and a tiny bead of sweat comes down to your eyebrow and you, you think, where, if I were a ship, where would I be leaking? Probably at the point that hit the water first. And so you feel down into the puddle of, of water that is slowly receding, thanks to Tuturu's uh, control water, uh, but you do feel that there is a little bit of break in the keel in one port in one spot. All right. You're you're able to uh, so go ahead and make a strength check for me uh, okay. to be able to fix that spot. Uh, I got a twelve. Okay, that's good enough. You find Woo! the spot and you're able to, even though you have to hammer through water, you're still able to have enough <clears throat> momentum thanks to your big minotaur muscles to be able to close that gap. <clears throat> All right. 
I'm doing uh, good. I'm a great bosun. <clears throat> two true. It's your turn. Uh, how many leaks? There's two left. Two and left. Sophia is working on one. Yep. Uh, well, so I counted the one that Sophia is working on oh, uh, already. So there's two okay. others. Uh, the the one that that Sophia is working on though was unable to be gotten to from inside the ship. Got it. Okay. Um, I will move create a trench. Can I do anything else with this? I have it for ten minutes. I think at this point, Tutu is probably like she's not a waterbender. So this is very new to her, and she like mm -hmm. just barely picked it up. So I think at this point she's probably just gonna be like, ah, okay, I I can't hold this much longer, and she's probably gonna drop it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, because I she's this is all very new to her, so I don't think I can hold this much longer. And she's gonna like walk around and try to see if she can find any of the leaks while trying to hold it. Okay, make a perception check for me. Okay. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Ooh, that was good. 20... 23. Wow, okay. 23. You are... Uh, you, you're keeping a hold of the control water, um, and you're just holding on to... making sure that no new water is coming on board while your compatriots are... Uh, uh, fixing, plugging up the holes. You can see uh, that there uh, there are only three spots where water is sort of burbling in. There's the back corner uh, where you know Safia is fixing. There is a small uh, break in the in the uh, middle of the keel near the front, and then another okay. standard one in the side uh, near the left front, which are kind of nearish to each other. Um, with a 23, while you're walking around, you can also pick up that there is, there appears to be uh, a medium-sized island relatively nearby um, that looks like it has uh, trees and rocks and there, uh, there, and 23. There is a dock uh, oh. nearby. Relatively okay. nearby. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to relay all of that so that everyone else knows where to fix the other holes. Okay. Um, yeah and just continue to keep water from sinking in. Fabulous. Lydia. Okay, so I'm, you said there's two holes left? There's three left. Mm -hmm. Sophia's working on one of them. The other two are close to each other, though. Okay, so I'll go over and mend them holes. Great. Make, make that performance check for me again. <sighs> it's so beautiful, you, these paintings. You know I love it. Wood planks down here. <laughs> 10. 10? This one's not as good of a plank. It's like a little, It's got, the lines are a little off. Um, but w thanks to the control water, you are easily able to take care of both of the leaks at the same time. Drawing arm's getting a little tired. That's how that is. <laughs> I've been drawing all day. Uh, and so water is no longer actively seeping into the boat, except for in the one back corner where Sephia is mending. Um, I would say that the mending takes enough of an effect even this far into the spell uh, to make it so that the water is not pouring in. It is a trickle at this point. Um, and over the next minute, you are able to mend uh, that back corner, and the ship is no longer taking damage. We can we can drop out of initiative at that point. Ooh, <sighs> we did it! Yeah! Oh my gosh! You're muted, Riley. Sophia comes. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I'm, I've been trying to fix my captioning because they've been they're lingering on screen. Um, after about a minute, um, then Sophia comes back up because she's now mended her hole on, on that she was working on. Um. <sighs> Solea uh, is going to scour the horizon I, I, and does not see the uh, missing masthead. I don't. I don't know where oh. the, where it would have gone. Um, okay. Yeah. I. Sorry. I, I was. I got so distracted by the captions that I forgot that was happening. So I think no once I come up, I probably now go to the front of the boat and jump off. Like I, I probably swim under the boat instead of getting back on it and swim down to see if I can see where the mast head sunk to. Okay. Um, perception or investigation for me. Uh, well, one is plus eight, so I'm gonna go with that one. Just <laughs> sure. just as a thought. Yeah. That sounds good. 
Yeah, and that's going to be a uh, that's going to be a, a twenty-one. Okay, you think that you can barely see uh, the masthead sinking about a hundred feet below you? Um, heavy water or heavy wood uh, in this water. It looks like it is plummeting uh, down. Okay, I can move sixty feet. A second, so I am, go- or every six seconds, I guess. Uh, so I am going to try to swim as fast as I can towards it. So I'm going to essentially do okay. like a dash towards it. Yep, and it is not, it's not dashing. So you yeah. are able to get to it about 150 feet below the <sighs> surface of the ocean. Okay. Um, am I able, since it's underwater, am I able to push it like back up, or is it way too heavy for me? It's pretty heavy. I would say you can stop it in its movement of sinking. Um, you could probably maneuver it at like very slowly back. Make a strength check for me. Okay. <laughs> this should be fun. Uh, well, actually, that's a that's a, a natural sixteen, so that's not terrible for someone okay. with no strength. <laughs> All right. So sixteen total. Yeah, I have, I have a plus zero strength, but I think, I mean, that, that's about the best as I can ask for, but I'm not going to nat 20 on that. Sure. So I would say that you are able to uh, drag and with the power of uh, Thassa Grace behind skull. you, oh. with the power of Grey Skull <laughs> behind you, you can, like, with all of your energy and all of your effort, pull it back up to the surface. I am going to give you a level of exhaustion. That's fair. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, because as, I haven't eaten today, so. Yeah, ex- ex- yeah exactly. Um, so yeah, thanks to fasting and drudging this giant that you're able to bring it up to the surface. Hey, and that is where it is. I, 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 oh, go ahead. Uh, Astarok and Tutru both grab ropes and, uh, throw them off and we yell, Yeah. Tie it around there! Okay. I, I tried uh, to help tie it, yeah. Great. So a not tying check. Interesting. Uh, you're a sailor, so I think that you would have pro- uh, proficiency or advantage or whatever it is that would need to be done here. I'm pretty sure not tying is intelligence, sleight of hand. So okay. add your intelligence bonus, and if you're proficient in sleight of hand, you can add that bonus as well. And go ahead and roll an advantage because you're, you're a woman of the sea. Well, I'll, I'll roll it standard then because I would have a disadvantage on this for exhaustion. Oh, for so. exhaustion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, cool. I rolled, I rolled a uh, 18. Okay. Nice. You, oh, yeah. you get some good sheep shanks going and you're able to secure the masthead uh, of Granny. Um, and uh, it is, it, you think that it is well tied. Um, I think that I would actually spend the minute that I could to use mending to reseal it to the, um, to wherever it's, are we, are we trying, are we trying to put, tie it back to the mast or are we just putting it on Not the boat? Yet. So okay. you're still in the water. It okay. would need to be pulled up onto the boat. Oh, and oh, oh sorry. Well, well, I misunderstood. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, so this is, it's tied in the water. Okay. So Astaroth, Tuturu, you, you think that uh, it, it is well tied now uh, for you to, to pull up. All right. Heave ho. All right. Um, I won't make you make a check because it's both of you and you're being careful. You can pull the masthead back up onto the ship. Um, it is rescued. Uh this is not something that can be simply mended. This okay. is going to require uh, some more detailed carpentry uh, and and fixing. Okay. As long okay. as safe, that's what matters. It's fine. Uh, and now that you're on the ship, you do you also would see with your passive perception that there is a nearby island uh, with with a what appears to be a a dock of some kind. Is it familiar to me? Um, go ahead and make a, let's go history check. At disadvantage, because you're exhausted. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, okay. So, okay, with the, with the disadvantage, it's a six. Okay. Doesn't look particularly familiar. Okay. Uh, well, we're famished. We should probably head over there anyways. So why don't you get, why don't you just relax and we'll handle getting over there and uh, let's see what's going on. Yeah, I think Sophia goes to respond and then just sprawls out on the deck. 
because she yeah. is just like her strength is gone at this point and she's just like i need a moment yeah so you can park uh you can you can steer the ship lydia uh over to the dock and um and you are landed this appears to be a fairly large uh small island with um there, there's a simple dock, and there's a uh, outbuilding. Um, you, Lydia, you would recognize that there is a saltery, um, mm. a which collects salt from the ocean on a large copper sheet, uh, just uh, maybe a few dozen yards away from the um, from from the dock itself. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check, Lydia. Um, okay. And then, uh, Astrock and Tutri, what are your passives? Uh, my passive, uh, passive what? Perception. Perception. Uh, 15. Minus 11. And Sophia, you're, you're resting, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I will, I will say that you're not actively looking. No, that's, that's fair. Yeah. I think, I think that I am, I think that I am definitely working off that exhaustion a little bit. So. And Solea is tending to you. Uh, and and making sure you're all right gets you water gets you food whatever it is that you need. Okay, Lydia, would you roll? Seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, with a seventeen, you look at that uh, saltery, and you've seen these all over Melitus. These are like it's how you collect salt. Like this is very standard. This saltery has not been gathered from in a very long time. This appears to be a um, abandoned saltery of some kind. Uh, Tutoru, with your 15, um, there are, you see no people here. Okay. Um, you see no, no, no people of any kind. Um, you do see a sign that says, uh, Yorga's salt, uh, next to the saltery. And there is, um, there's like an outbuilding that has a lantern on it, uh, that is not lit. Uh, but you see no people. Okay. The dock looks like it's in working order, um, not not decrepit in any way, but yeah. uh, looks abandoned. Hmm. And can I like? Is this island small enough that we can um, like look around and see the other side of the island? Essentially. Um. From where you are, it's mostly uh uh. It's pretty steep. Um, I'll just go ahead and turn on daylight mode for you all to take a look at the full the full breadth of the island. Um, the 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 beach that you're on is sort of like a, a peninsula, uh, a little oh, gotcha. round peninsula, mm -hmm. and okay. then there are cliffs and a hill that lead up. You can right. see that it's probably I'm going to say a thousand feet from one side of the island to the other, but you can't see the other side of the island. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Cool. Uh, and real quick, I want to send a quick shout out to uh, Dice Grimorium, uh, whose map that I used for this particular oh, adventure. Lovely. Nice. Mm. Thank you, Dice Grimorium. Mm, thank you. So yeah, you can you can see that uh, there are signs of um, civilization. Uh, actually, go ahead and make another perception check for me, since you're scouring the horizon, trying to see what you can see. All right, Tutoru is staring yeah. intently. That's a natural 20. 25. Nice. <clears throat> okay. Bow, bow, bow. You can very uh, easily see that to your west, just up a cliff, there appears to be some amount of uh, uh, hovels of houses, uh, maybe three or four that you can see the roofs of. You can't see the full uh, uh, vision of them, but you also see smoke rising. Little little whiff of smoke rising from that collection of houses, uh, and then you can also see smoke rising from to your northwest. Much more smoke, uh, maybe three or four wisps to the northwest, uh, further away from where you are. All right, I will relay that to everyone. I guess there might be some people there, or you know, the forest is on fire. I'm not sure, but. There's a sign of life. Uh, but, I mean, if we find them, maybe they can tell us where we are, because it seems like we're maybe a little far away from where it was we we tried to be. We can get our bearings, go find what's happening to uh to the captain's kid, and and uh, 
get on the right track. Maybe yeah. somewhere you can rest up for a little while. Yeah. And if not, there's free salt. That's true. That's right. You can collect as much salt as you need right here. Mm. Um, what would you like to do? I think we're going to book it towards wherever the smoke is. How do you feel, everyone? That's yeah. what I was thinking. Yep. I'll do what I can. Odie, no. watch the ship. Okay. I got an eye on it. Uh, Soleil is going to come with you, of course, unless you object. No, I, I, I wouldn't. I, she's capable. She's an adult. She's pretty old, so she's like in her 40s, so I think she sure. can probably handle herself. Or, I mean, the other option would be to watch the ship. Was the? Was I mean, the if option. she wants to, but I, I think that... I think that I, I, here's what I'll say. I don't think that Sophia has any illusions that she can tell uh Solia what to do at this point That's in her fair. life i think yeah. i think the fact that Solia is living with her other mother and not sailing with me means that i know that she is makes her own decisions in life so i i would i would not um presume that she could choose that i could tell her what to do gotcha. i think if i told i think if i told her to do something she would do the opposite just to spite me so, <laughs> so she um, hears you put Odie in charge of the ship and she is thankful that she did not have to argue with you about staying on the ship and she will follow you and make sure that yeah. you're okay i think i'm too um, exhausted to have that conversation with her so <laughs> I'm just like, fair fine. enough so you've got two sources of smoke there's one close and one far which one do you want to head towards Probably close, close smoke. smoke. This one. Close yeah, smoke. This one. So you uh, can head up uh, the hill and uh, just to your, you're sort of corkscrewing counterclockwise up and you end up in a, what looks like a village essentially um, of, you know, maybe a half dozen homes, small homes, uh, thatch roofs, um, you know, sort of, um, bamboo and and grass and you do see that there is a brazier that has a fire going in it um all of the doors of all of the homes are shut there does not appear to be any human activity uh in this entire area is, should we knock on doors is this normal lydia have you ever are you familiar with these types of islands at all? Like, uh, this doesn't seem familiar at all. There's usually um, people or, or pets. Um, you know, we could just go if it looks like there's people where the smoke is. We could just knock on the door real hard, and maybe one of them, maybe they're hiding. You know, maybe it's yeah. a, some kind of a, a holiday or something. Well, how about we split up, knock on a couple doors, see if anybody answers. And if they don't, we just keep going. Make okay, our way towards going. wherever the smoke is coming from. All okay. Right. So there's no houses here. It's just the fire. There's a fi no. There's a, there's about five or six small homes. But um, they're all shut. There is. They're all shut up. Yeah. All the windows are closed, and the doors are shut. All right. We'll knock on them. Okay. Hello. Uh, just to see who who gets this one. Everyone, roll a d20 and tell me who gets the highest. Oh, Since you're all splitting up and knocking on different doors. I think Sophia is not even going to bother her. I think she is just leaning on her staff and kind of trying to, like, give herself some energy. So her, yeah, friends, her friends are good at knocking. Wasted it on this roll. Wow. <laughs> you get it. All right. So you all are knocking <laughs> on doors. Hello? Is anybody home? Knock, knock, knock. Knock, uh, knock, nope. knocking on village doors. <laughs> nobody nobody home for Lydia or Tuturu. Um Astrock goes into patrol mode. He's just like, Boros Legion, open up. Yep. <laughs> uh, you can hear, uh, you you don't get an answer, but you can hear scrabbling noise from inside of the house that you knock on, Astrock. Hello? Is anyone in there? We, we don't mean you any harm. <laughs> we were just trying to figure out where we are. You hear nervous, uh, sort of animalistic whinnying. Nervous whinnying. Are you okay? Where'd everybody else go? No uh, answer. Astrox is going to try the door. Uh, it's unlocked. Then he's going to open it. You look inside, and inside there are four pigs. Oh. Yeah. Mm. And they look at you nervously, and they're back a, into a corner. There's just a bunch of pigs in here. 
I look over yeah. at Soleil. I go, is your mother around? Um, I mean, maybe. Is this her island? Maybe. Okay. Were they jerks at least, or? I mean, they were probably jerks. I don't know. I can't control. You know you can't control her. He's wild, you know? Okay. Nobody kill the pigs. Don't, don't, just, I know you, I don't think you eat meat anyway, one of you, or both of you, I don't know, but uh, you I'm don't want to eat. Pig. Lydia, you don't want to eat this, this this meat, just as a heads up. Okay. okay. Would you say these boars are, like, two twos? <laughs> yeah, they're two two boars. They're two two pig. Two two, two swine tokens, yes. Yep, wonderful. <laughs> Um, and so they uh, stay sort of. Too swoo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Too swoo. Um, and so they they will stay in that little hovel there. Um, you can move over to the uh, larger area if you so choose. Um, and when you approach in that direction, you can uh, see that there are a number of other pigs. Uh, two of which are tied to poles uh, in the middle of what looks like a fighting pit. Um, sure are a lot of pigs here. Yeah, this is a little yeah. strange. My Who would leave all thing. these quality pigs alone in a, a town? My ex. Big pig lever, your ex? In a manner of... It's 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 less that they weren't pigs until she got to them. Oh no! Here's the um, are you are you familiar with a spell called polymorph or transmutation or shape shifting involuntarily? Um, I, I mass don't know if involuntary shape shift. Yeah, probably. Shape shifting, I've heard of. Uh, yeah. Look, it's not ringing as something that a, doesn't seem possible in my head. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting. A, I'm, I'm getting a, a more of a no sense. Okay, I'm. I'm, I'm slipping into Velma voice. Sorry, I'm, my, my exhausted. <laughs> my exhausted. Sif, Sif, I was Velma all along. No, uh, my exhausted <laughs> Sophia voice sounds so much like Velma's uh, affected <laughs> accent. Basically, um, what I'm getting is that these aren't actually pigs. I mean, they're actually pigs. They just weren't born as pigs. Um, and they might not be pigs again if they don't get eaten in that fighting pit. Um, and you do look into the fighting pit, and in addition to the pigs that are staked to the middle and look very frightened, there are two wolves and two lions okay. that are sort of on opposite sides of the fighting pit circling the pigs. They don't look like they have a very good chance of not... Getting eaten. What were those wolves and lions before? Oh, those are probably wolves and lions, yeah. All right, just, you know, making sure we're all on the same page here because it seems like animals are turning into other things. So are you approaching the, the fighting pit or are you trying to stay hidden or...? I'm scouring the area looking for... Uh, looking for... Uh, Alestra. She is not hidden. She is seated up on a large throne uh, with a wolf and a lion sitting next to her okay. uh, and watching the festivities. And she sees a group approaching in the distance, your group, if you're not trying to be stealthy. Um, but she's mostly, paying, <laughs> she's mostly paying attention to the fighting pitch. She doesn't seem to recognize who is coming. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I normally don't. Have, I mean, I'm normally not super stealthy to begin with, and I also would have disadvantage at this point because of of being exhausted. And I'm I'm basically using a staff to walk with, so uh, I'm going to say that I'm not trying to be stealthy, or I, I can try to be. We'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> um, oh, two yeah, is not, not stealthy. I'm going to let y'all know that I'm not stealthy because I rolled uh, yeah. out, out of my two. I didn't roll a double digit on either one of those dice, so I'm I am. Who I'm at is seven. approaching? Who who is who is approaching? You know who I am. You can tell by my hair. Oh, shit. Okay. Hey, Safia. Soleya, hey. you didn't want to send a message ahead of time? Soleya's like, we 
crash landed. Um, you sent her to find me. You knew we were coming. I didn't know that you'd be back so soon. I was having some fun. I would have, you know, not had a fight pit the day that you. Anyway, come up here. You know how I feel about that. Were they pirates at least? Like not good pirates. Of course they were pirates. Every time, I mean, you know, if they were just sailing adventurers who weren't trying to steal my stuff, okay, maybe they were adventurers, but they were trying to steal from me. Okay, here's the thing about this, as we talked about in the past. Do they know it's yours before they try to steal it, or do they think it's buried? See, there's a there's a thing <clears throat> about intent and, 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 and what's in their heart. Like, if they were trying to rob you, I get it. But if they were just like, ah, oh, there's a treasure here, let's see what it is. That's that's well, where it's, I, it's I a mean, little dicey. I could uh, I can tell you what I saw. What I saw was that they showed up on my island, and then I said, "Hey, what are you doing here?" And then one of them turned around with a bow, and one of them turned around with like a like a metal wand that had the hole in the end of it. I don't know what 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 was going on, and I was just like, okay. oh, suddenly fair. suddenly pigs. Okay, fair. Can just for me and my friends here. Cause they're like pretty good people and I, I well two of them are pretty good people and i i think i'm just kidding i i adore you i just feel like i feel like you're i feel like you're kind of on board with with the pig fighting stuff so that's why i was like I, <laughs> sorry oh. i assume wrong um can you just turn them back and let them go and tell them like ah this is your one warning and fine Enjoy. they'll tell people to avoid the island because of the pig thing so true you will uh you give one of them like a nice bop on the nose if that'll help she waves her hand and the two pigs that are tied to the post uh, turn back into what look like sailor adventurer types. Help! Help me! Help us out, please! There's lions and, and wolves, and we don't want to be here anymore. I'm sorry, we'll leave. We'll just leave, okay? You're lucky that I'm feeling generous today because I have guests. And then, you know, she'll... As, as they're running away, up. as they're running away, Sophia yells, remember that Thassa saved you today. Just remember that. So <laughs> pay Thassa. her some penance. Praise Thassa. <sighs> well, that seems insincere. I want some sincere prayers. Honestly, I think it might have been a mistake to let him go without a good shake. But, you know, this is your place. I mean, you they're still you. there. If you if you you're pretty fast, if you want to run and shake them, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> uh, they're basically gone by now. Yeah, I want to punch a pig, but I want to earn it. So, <laughs> welcome back to the island, Captain. How are things? Um, well, not great. I don't know if you heard this, but my my other kid in a little bit of trouble. And uh, you seem to know something about it, maybe, or 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 I, I know I know what you know. Sorry. Um, so I, I just would love would love if you could point me if you could help me get my ship prepared. And then point me in the direction of the Siren Sea. So, and also, if you've got anything that will help my friends who don't breathe water to breathe water, that would be great. And then also, um, hi, good to see you. You look nice. I like yeah, your hair hi. like that. How's it going? Um, Thank you. I mean, let's not get too mad. You were in the middle of a pig fighting fit when I walked up, so we're we're pretty even. Um, but anyway, uh, your hair looks great like that. I like it. It's a good look for you. Um, but yeah, if you got like anything that would help my friends breathe underwater, because I feel like that's going to be really important for what's happening. Um, Lydia and I are covered, but the other two, I don't think they know how to swim. So um, that's going to be a problem. But um, I think I could yeah. probably swim if I tried. Yes. I think you, you could. Are. I think you're very capable. Uh, mm -hmm. Siren Sea, uh, underwater, got to head down to Calcus and make sure people are not dead yet. You are in you're just incorrigible. Um, and she what will. What kid leave. is in danger? What would you do if it was Salia? I would be pretty upset. Listen, I I agree with you. I it is a very upsetting situation. But you show up unannounced, even though I know you were coming eventually. I didn't know how quickly you were going to get here. You ask for a bunch of shits. You never you never call. You never visit. You I like called like a week ago. <laughs> not me. I Okay, fair. You're right. Sorry. I, I, I apologize. I, yeah, I, look, how are you? I'm well. Thank you for asking. Things are entertaining as always. We're close enough to the shore that I have plenty of entertainment in my time off. Not that you would like my kind of entertainment, 
Ignore the fighting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Out of character, if you base this character on Cersei, I, I wouldn't trust her like general love of children as a reason <laughs> to motivate. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> it's her own children. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, we're, I know. I know the story of Cersei. <laughs> we have, we have, I, we I have based the... her more on Cersei from the novel Cersei than I did Cersei right. from the Odysseus still. Yeah. And also, Riley didn't know that I was basing this character on. I didn't know that the character was based on Cersei to begin with. I made oh, this one separately. Yeah, that's hilarious. That was completely like <laughs> I, really well. I I was joking when I was like, "Is your is this your is this your mom home?" And then when you reacted to it, I'm like, "Cool, we're playing," and I love it. This is great. Come on, come on. We've got we've got work to do, and she will lead you back into uh, a larger abode um, with lots of. There's an alchemy table. There is um, lots of boxes of materials. Um, there appear to be uh, piles of clothes, uh, various, uh, you know, adventuring gear. There's like a there's like an umbrella holder that has multiple, like ten foot poles and staves and things in it. Um, there's a coat rack that you can uh, see that there's a coat hanging on, and she leads you inside and says, "All right, all right." Um, so you know you you know that we we have not really had as much success um uh breaking through whatever barrier there is there's something blocking my scrying attempts and um you know it's it's uh, it's it's very frustrating but uh perha perhaps we can work together to make that uh, better that would be great i i don't have the ability to scry it's not something that um fasa has has bestowed up on me as a power but uh, I do. Do I have scry? No, I do not. I'm not at least not at this level. higher level. Um, okay. Um, I don't have the ability to scry, um, but I do have the ability to message. And I did get. I was able to send a message to, to him, but uh, it was very broken. It was hard to reach through. Uh, I called the big lady, and she told me that uh, that it was definitely my fault. So yeah. trying to nice, use, nice use guidance, by the way. Oh yeah, isn't this isn't this the best thing ever? I can't believe I got that. This is this is this is just like a show button. up on my doorstep with the Biden to Thassa. Never mind. Listen. So we have a, a device. I didn't do it to show off. I just happened to have it. Oh no! It's never to show off. It's always just I'm an adventurer showing up with. You know what? We don't have to have this argument in front of friends. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. I okay. we're here to save Odexes and the, the city. I have, we have a device here that we've been working on that is able to magnify and power up lower powered spells, sort of like a loudspeaker. Um, okay. And so if I you, don't know if you use this, but that sounds interesting. It's like, a, it's like a like a like a cone that you put your mouth up to, and it makes your oh, mouth like thaumaturgy. Gotcha. Okay. A little bit, but like, yeah, it's like thaumaturgy actually. But it can it can um, thaumaturgy your other spells. It can emphasize your other spells. So if you have a spell that that you think could work uh, to to your advantage in some way, but the range is too small or the effect is too little, we can try to magnify it using this uh, this this device that we've developed. Okay. That's... If any of you have any way to look uh into other um i don't know you can you know, uh, locate some sort of object or creature uh this can extend the reach of that um if you're trying to restore something that would that would require a greater amount of restoration you can probably use it for that um i, do, I, I, do I don't know what ability. you have access to i do have the ability to to cast a spell to locate him but i don't have that spell prepared today because i was focusing my energy on talking to thassa so uh, unfortunately that that would require a little bit of rest so i don't know if anybody else ha but none of you from are familiar with him but me so nobody else could do it but me um uh, i have it i am familiar with it but i too was not prepared for it today of course of course well, i expect you to I, I don't you're fine if um, you want to spend the night, you're going to need ship repairs, right? We'll get yeah. the people on it. We'll get your your go on it. He's having fun being a lion for now, though. So I wouldn't, you know, just wait a second. Um, ah, they were people. 
I, you know what? <laughs> I'm wrong. I'm sorry, Polly. That's a that's a new trick for you. All right, cool. I, mean, um, I just like they like you know if they if they living here and they're helpful, I give them jobs, and sometimes they like to turn into di- whatever. You don't need my whole life story. So I, um, you know, you're welcome to stay here for the night. Uh, just keep in mind that if you choose to stay here, some people don't want to leave at the end of that. Um, and the magic of the island is a little wonky. Um, I'll try to keep, I'll try to keep it, uh, a little bit, uh, uh, I, I won't actively try to do anything to you. Just, just trust me. I know, I understand that I'm a little bit, you know, salty, <laughs> but it's not, it's not personal with you folks. Um, so, you know, we'll make, we'll give you some good rest. We'll have a nice meal and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to it tomorrow. Sound good? Sounds, sure. good. Sounds good. I mean, you obviously know that I can leave if I want to. I have. I mean, I do. We do have a child together, so obviously I didn't at one point. But I, I am yeah. aware that you can leave when you want to. I didn't mean it like that. I'm sorry. That was very rude. I apologize. Um, no, I, I, no, sure. And you can tell that this is like they're like teasing each other a little yeah, bit. It's, like it's a little bit right. like, you know, it's 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 very. But it is funny to see this. So also, can you describe? um uh the woman that i'm playing for me oh um i i guess i could um this is, I, I, uh alestra yeah i think that she's older because i think she's human and humans would age at more of a standard rate and i think that like um because tritons live longer and then thought uh sophia is also nick's born on top of being a triton so she looks a lot younger than she really is uh because sophia is about 70 um so this woman honestly the best image i can get in my head is like when tilda swinton played prospero in the tempest film uh right. but like an older version of that so like um i think i think tilda swinton played prospero didn't she somebody I think so. no woman played um in the um i'm looking it up too yeah um I prospero yeah, in the the um Julie Taymor Julie uh, Taymor that's who it was i was thinking yeah yeah yeah, okay. but I don't know why I can't see a good picture of it. But yeah, I think I think she has that. I think like very much like that, like robes and like sports wrist kind of vibe to her. And but older, like grayer hair, and it's definitely like I, I think she's probably in her seventies as a as a human. So okay, so she uh you know has that sort of no knowing look in her face. Um, but she's still got that spry young person's smile behind her. And, you know, she's a bit of a trickster herself. So you, she, uh, you're able to have a good meal. You're able to rest up. Uh, any preparations that you wish to make uh, during the evening, you're able to catch up uh, with Alestra and Solea. Um, is, there, is there anything you want to uh, talk about over dinner while you're here? Um... Fun adventures recently? I think we probably would catch her up a little bit on what we've been going through. I think we would probably tell her. I think we would probably recap some of the gods we've met and things like that. Okay. Maybe elaborating a little bit and giving it a little bit more of a... I know it doesn't look like it, but I'm not actually made of metal from the torso to my neck. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> oh, see a little... Like Alan Mirren that played Prospero in that movie, not Tilda Swinton, which I think actually makes more Perfect. sense for the age. So you, you, uh, Astarok, when you say that, she says, oh, interesting. And her eyes flash. Um, and you've, you've seen, uh, the, uh, identify spell be cast before. And she goes, oh, interesting. You've, yep. you have met several gods. I see. I drowned a dragon in lava for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a euphemism. I assume. Nope. That is a real thing that you just said. I've never met a euphemism in my life. Okay. <laughs> It was a dragon. And uh, Lydia, I think I've, uh, I think uh, um, Soleil has spoken of you. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And uh, and you you and Sophia have been uh, traveling together for a while. A few seasons, yeah. It's been. Um, I love I love the water, and there's no one you can learn more from than Sophia. So I've mm-hmm. just been. Um, but also, you know, we're friends and, uh, Sophia doesn't treat me like a novice or an acolyte or, um, you know, an apprentice. Sophia is my friend. Yeah. I travel. I traveled with Sophia. I know how it is. Oh, not like that. No, no, no. We're just friends. No, yeah, we're not. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. 
No, no, seriously, we're yeah, no, oh, seriously, really? like just she, friends. No, yeah, okay, yeah, she's. I mean, I know that I know that Sophia's had you know. Listen, I don't want to. You've had several travel companions. I didn't know. Okay, again, you you, you don't need to. It's not like that at all. We're just fine. she's fine. just she's she's almost like a like a dog like a like a third child to me. Like like not in that way oh, either. Not not in like I, a condescending way. It's just sure, it's that sure, sure. It's more of a, well, that's, of a that's good to know. I didn't know the context. Um, it's very nice to meet you, and I'm glad that you're you're uh, you found um, some compatriots that are have the adventuresome spirit that that uh, that the captain has. I stabbed some lizards. So I've got a question. Okay. Have you ever eaten people that you've turned into pigs? Do you want to know the answer to that question? Yeah, I kind of do. Let's say no. Hmm. Well, then I'll have to avoid my second question, because I was wondering if they taste more like pigs or more like people. Uh, the answer to your first question is no. The answer to your second question is they taste more like pigs than they taste like people. All right. I mean, I, I don't know what either of them tastes like, but I'm just wondering, would you, you know, like, like how much stays around when you turn somebody into another animal, right? Sure. Would you like to would you like to find out? Yeah, not particularly. I've got, I've, I've still got some of the, some of these pirates that are, uh, I've got them on in the, in the town. No, uh, no, I, I don't eat meat. I'm not entirely sure I'd even be able to digest it. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, um, y- the, the island is yours. You may take a, take, take a mai tai, take whatever you want, and, uh, and we'll, c- we'll come back together in the morning. I think before we settle down for bed, I think I would. I, by the way, I am sleeping on the boat. Um, okay. But I, I would definitely go speak to Celia before we settle down for the night, and I would just say to to them, I would say. Um, by the way, I, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about this yet, but I, I just want you to know that. I know that you were concerned that you would have to take on the burden of the family traditions. And I know that made you uncomfortable because of how you exist. And I didn't want you. So I am letting you know, as someone who had a similar path that she followed, that was different than what might have been that I, am, I have freed you of that obligation. And I, I have spoken to Lydia and, and she is willing to take on the, man, the stewardship of the Moray for at least a generation. And then if you have children someday, or if- They are going to just really, jump and hug yeah. you. Yeah. In the middle uh, of your sentence. Yeah, and I, I hug them back and I say, if, if you have children or if Odexus has, Thassa, Please bid that Alexis has children. Then Lydia will return to to give it to my grandchildren. But you are free. Your life is your own. Thank you. That, that means that means so much to me. And I I know I know our family's burden, and I know your burden. And I appreciate that you could, you, that you would give me this. Um, I have spent the last several decades looking for someone who was worthy of the task so that you could be free of it. And I can tell you that I knew Lydia was perfect for it the day she arrived on my ship, but I, I didn't want to thrust it on her without her willingness. So I, I waited till a proper time and she's I'm, the first person I've ever met who loves the sea as much as I do. And I can think of no better person to inherit the more. So good. I'm glad I'm glad. I'm glad that I'm glad that you found friends that are willing to take up the mantle with you. And the little I saw of Lydia, she seems absolutely lovely. And I'm, I, I love you. 
I love you too. You're staying on the and ship. I, and then I collapse on to sleep because I am. Oh. Okay. <laughs> she'll, she'll, she'll tuck you in. Yeah, because I am. I am. I am not having eaten because I've been fasting all day and I'm. I am tired, and so I am like, all right, Mama's out, and then I get. <laughs> she'll tuck you in. She'll and place like, Odie, Odie on the pillow next to you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and good. make sure that you're you're good to go. Um, where are the rest of you staying? Are you staying uh, on the island? He asks, not expecting anyone to say it after I ask it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're all staying yeah, on the boat. Oh, oh, you're staying on the boat. Oh, yeah, you would I'd stay on the boat. Uh, Astrock will stay somewhere on the island, but not yeah. too uh, not not too far from the boat. Sure. Yeah, there yeah. are there are easy uh, abodes that you can stay in. Um, as you wake up the next morning, though, go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw. Fair. Mm, wisdom so saving sure, throw. To see if you're affected by the curse of the swine. Seventeen. <laughs> uh, is it a charm or is it a curse? This is a curse. Okay, so fourteen. Okay, you're both fine. Um, you wake up in the morning. I'd so mad if I woke up, and my friends were pigs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Low DC, but if you spend more time on the island, eventually you're gonna fail. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. So you are. Uh, you're fine. Uh, you wake up in the morning and you really don't want to have bacon. And no. You are able to reconvene uh, and meet back up at um, uh, Alestra's device, focusing device, and um, the day is yours. You may sort of uh, uh, have breakfast and do all your morning preparations. Oh, Sophia inhales breakfast because she is really hungry and I also need to eat food and drink something to get my exhaustion away. So I, I definitely think that Sophia is, now that she's on the end of her fast, she is, she is, she is ready to break fast, as they would say, so. Yes, and you do remove your level of exhaustion because you took a long Let me roll and see what I've gotten back charge-wise on my staff. Oh, nice, I got six, six stacks, so it should be fully charged again. Nice. Cool. Dope. I do now realize that you have a staff and a Bident. Yeah. Sure. That's great. You could tie the yeah, two together well, and I make a superior doing it the, weapon. I'm, yeah, I'm kind of. <laughs> that? I said you could well, tie the two together and make a superior weapon. Right. Well, my staff, or, my staff already has like a couple of things at the end of it. Right. So oh. um, that might be too um, many. Yeah, <laughs> it would be what the dragon wanted—the five dent. Um, right. The so I I what was I saying? Oh well. You were recharging your thing, and then oh, I was saying what I what I what I imagine she's doing. What she does is she has the, the trident like a, like across her back, and then she actually like carries the staff because that's oh, okay. what she uses anyway. So excellent. Um, and uh, Alestra looks at you and says, "Well, here's the. Can I help in any way? Do you need um, do you need aid? Do you need?" How does this device work? I, I, I keep being Velma now. I'm not trying to be Velma. How does this device work? How does so, I, I'm all season I've been able to do Sophia now suddenly I'm Velma. Uh, we, we've been we've been working on it a little bit. Is a little bit of tinkering. We're trying to use a little bit of uh, mechanical know-how to focus magical energies. And so basically, when you're standing or sitting in inside of this circle, any spell that you cast is enhanced in some way, shape, or form, and sort of echoes and reverberates and bounces back on each other to be able to power up the device. Uh, and so whatever whatever spell that you need to cast, um, for example, I, I cast uh, uh, some, some missiles, uh, and they were bigger uh, than, than I'd originally planned on them being, for example. Um, so any spell that's cast in this device enhances in some way. I would like to make an insight check on Alestra to see if there's something that she's kind of being dodgy or evasive about, because it seems too good to be true. Sure. Go ahead and make an insight check. Okay. Okay. That is a 27. That is way higher than I rolled. I rolled a 19, I rolled a 19 and I have a plus 8 on insight, so. Yeah. You can tell that she is being honest. She is not being entirely forthright. Okay. She is not telling you something. There's something okay. she is not telling you about this device. Okay. Um, I am going to look at her 
and I am going to say, hang on, let me make sure I, because I haven't set my spells up for the day, so I want to uh, make sure I give myself the spell that I wanted to use. Um, all right. Um, I do have locate person or creature uh, prepared, so cool. Okay. I look at her and I go, are you going to make me do it? Do what? Alastra. Surely I don't know what you're talking about. And she crosses her arms. Sweetie, are you going to make me, are you going to make me compel you to tell the truth? Or do you want to just be a little more? I have no idea what you're talking about. She says, I, I look over at Solia and I go, what's she not telling me? There may be some, there may be some side effects, you know, when you, why are you telling her that, whatever, fine. I'm okay. trying to know, save listen. their brother. I know. And you can use the device to do that. You also might me? accidentally have some side effect happen. Maybe. It's not perfect. The device isn't perfect yet. Um, you know, you get, I mean, you'll be fine. You can yeah, at least tell us powerful. what we're getting into. You're a super powerful person. You'll be fine. I mean, I, okay. So I uh, hurt myself psychically one time when I tried to cast a thing. Um, I, you know, you remember those missiles? I kind of shot some of them into myself while I was shooting the other missiles. You know, whatever the spell is that you're casting it could have an adverse effect on you. I don't know what is going to happen if you cast locate your son, but... Okay. I I want to... Do I need to roll insight check again, or does my other one already stand? Does she seem sincere? It, it seems okay. sincere. Okay. I look over at Tutsuru, and I go, if something happens to me, you've got, like, pretty good healing abilities, right? Oh, don't worry. I've got you completely covered, and you're going to be able to find Odexi's no problem. And when she says that, she, like, gives, like, a wink, and uh, as she does that, I forgot if Guidance, if I have to touch you for that. Guidance. It is, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, cool. And uh, she has a wink and a little boop, and a little leaf <laughs> flutter, and you get Guidance. Leaf okay. boop. Okay. Okay, um, I am going to then uh, cast Locate Creature, which is a level four spell on the yes. device. And I'm going to focus it. And what do I need to do for that? That is, um, I don't so need material read, effects. Read Locate Creature to me. Okay. Um, I was looking at the components to make sure I didn't have to spend any material, but I oh, don't because sure. um, I'm using my focus, um, which is my focus is actually my cool necklace that channels. It has piece, pieces oh. of the same crystal that is in my staff, like the agates that's been like formed by the water. It's like sea glass, essentially. Um, oh. And so I kind of channel that up. And then so the, the spell is describe or name a creature that is familiar to you. You sense the direction to the creature's location as long as creatures within a thousand feet of you. If the creature is moving, you know the direction of its movements. The spell can locate a specific creature known to you so long as you have seen such a creature close within 30 feet at least once. If the creature you describe or name is in different forms, such as the effects of polymorph, which I'll be so mad at her if it is, uh, the spell doesn't locate the creature. The spell can't locate the creature if running water at if running water at least 10 feet wide blocks a path between you and the creature. So oh, there's, no. a lot of, there's a lot of reasons here why this spell's not going to work for finding yep. my, my son who is underwater more than a thousand feet away from me. Running water is different than, than the ocean. Okay, fair enough. Um, Current, but yeah. it, I would say um, that if you were trying to cross a river, then perhaps this might be different. But yes, uh, hopefully yeah, he's not on the other side. The, the, hopefully the he's not on the wrong side of the river. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, and this just happens, right? Uh, yeah, this is a concentration spell. I can concentrate it up to, up to an hour. Okay. So I don't know what effect it'll have as far as the enhancement because of this device, but normally it only works within a thousand feet. So I don't know okay. what the device yep. will do for it. So this is, so you are able to close your mind and picture black space but with reverberating blue and aquamarine um, sort of echolocation pings mm -hmm. as you hone in. And much like um, 
the the device in X Men, you can sort of expand your mind out and Cerebro. You, the, Cerebro, that's the one. And you ping. It's and actually ping. Cer Cercebo. Cercebo. <laughs> yes, you're using Cercebo. And you send Should out I go, your I go if you guys want me to go. I understand. <laughs> We're all here together at this point. There's no there's we have to stay aboard the sinking ship. So no, we uh, fixed it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so you uh, send out your consciousness and are attempting to locate Odexes. Yeah. Yes. And typically the range is a thousand feet, but you were able to spread out and you've never felt the magnification and it's cert it is circling and swirling around in your mind and you hone in exactly on the location of where Odexes is. Odexes it, and uh, um, yeah, you're just focusing on Odexes. Odexes mm -hmm. is uh, 1,000 feet below the surface of the ocean in the middle of the ocean. There are no other islands nearby. Um, about two days travel from where you are. Okay. I pull back, and now that I kind of have like a location, I maybe like look up at the sky and try to like triangulate. I imagine like what I can as best I could, so I have like a, I can know where to go from. Okay, make a charisma saving throw for me. Yeah, I figured that might happen. And then this is where I'm going to use my guidance. Yeah. Nice. Wood dolls. And uh, okay, uh, that didn't help too much, but it's not terrible because I rolled a twelve plus. Luckily, I'm proficient in charisma and so uh, for saving throws. So that is going to be a that's sixteen plus one. So that's going to be seventeen total, including the guidance. Ooh, okay. Uh, that means you're only going to suffer a short term madness. Go ahead and roll um, uh, percentile for me. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, boy. Percentile. Ooh. Okay. That is 33. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a club. 33. That's a club. Weird... Okay. So I'll, I'll let you decide how this madness affects you. And it only is going to affect you for the next 10 minutes. Okay. You roll that you become frightened and have to use your action and movement each round to flee from the source of the fear. <laughs> okay. So you pull back and you have this knowledge in your mind and you suddenly are overwhelmed by a sense of fear. A fear of what? I think that the most logical thing here is Alestra because that's not her name, is it? Um, did I just make yeah, it? Alestra. Alestra. Yeah, it's Alestra. Uh, Alestra. Yeah, I was thinking that, okay, I just realized I named her after, I, I just realized I accidentally named her the uh, the fat-free chip stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I realized that that happened. I think I looked it up for something, but um, Alestre, I think, okay, so I think that my natural feeling is that because I think she did something to me because it's her device, mm -hmm. that makes the most sense to me. And so I look at her and I go, you promised! And then I go running the other direction. Uh, Calm down. Um, okay, this, uh, can you stop her, please? Well, I, we'll get it. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it, maybe it's a side effect? Um, you know what? I'm going to just, and she points a finger, uh, and I need a wisdom saving throw from you, um, Sophia. Uh, uh, Astrock is running after you, Sophia, being like, all right, Cap, come on, as this is happening. <laughs> And like she's fighting to like like if you catch her she's like because you're probably you're faster than me so he, yeah. he's trying to do the like uh, 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 <laughs> no, yeah. no 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 yeah because like right now I can't move I guess with frightened you can't move but that you you can you can you don't have to run away if you're frightened you just can't move closer to your correct okay never mind so I didn't run away I just kind of go I think I started well, I think, backing up from her I think this one said you need to use your action to move you away from you need to actually yeah. move away from the source of your fear yes okay. yeah because gotcha. it's a madness okay. instinct it's more like so, having Dissonant Whispers, but that's like a damage. Okay. Right. Um, cool. Wisdom so, save. Saving throw. Okay. Um, I feel like, okay, that's a, it's not the best, but it's a 14. It's not going to be. Yeah. She's a very powerful transmuter. Uh, her polymorph spell takes hold on you. What do you oh. think she turns you into? I feel like she wouldn't turn me into a pig. Um why i was asking because i don't think she turned you into a pig either i think she turns me into a giant crab okay giant crab 
She needs a minute. <laughs> calm down, everybody. Calm down. She's acting a little the crab, crabby. The crab is still frightened. Yes. So the crab is like... And Astrock is still like sidling, trying to keep up with the crab's movement. Be the, uh, uh, no, go, go, calm down, crab captain. Crabton. Yeah, she yeah. just needs a little bit of time to, to chill, to cool off. This will wear off soon, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm gonna... I made her more terrified than she already was. <laughs> she she doesn't? To kill, so she'll I be just... fine. She'll be fine. I'm a professional polymorpher. She'll be she'll be good. Um is, by the way, does anybody else want to be turned into animals? Somebody, some of my uh, the locals like like it. You know what? Never mind. Um, and then ten minutes pass, and you are no longer frightened. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, uh, and Playmore, how long does Playmore last? Like an hour, ten minutes. No, it's like an hour. Okay. Oh, I think yeah. my, my headphones are stuffed out. Hang on. Yeah, it's an hour. Um, oh my but gosh. once the crab looks like it has calmed down a little bit, she will drop the polymorph. Sorry, my my All right. earbud just dropped out on me. Hang on. Anyways, I can't hear anybody. So to save some, uh, to kill some time, Astrox's like, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing what it's like to be a human for a little bit. A um, human. you know, it's kind of boring. Uh, I could turn you into a human. Yeah, I'll give okay. you a quick shot. <gasps> okay. She'll point a finger at you. And you polymorph into a commoner. Boop, boop. Describe for me what human Astarok looks like. Uh, he he looks like kind of beefy, like he, you know, because he used to be a cow. But he's he's got like a really strong jaw and like kind of brownish red hair. Uh, and he goes, "Hey, look at me! I've got a short nose and can't use my head as a weapon." Ha ha. <laughs> okay, well, what, if you're, that is what you're just gonna like. mock us. We do not sound like that. My feet don't. Uh, my feet aren't particularly good at going on hard surfaces because I don't have hooves. Ba -boop, ba -boop, ba -boop. <laughs> you have fingers on your toes now. <laughs> on your feet now. <laughs> Look at these useless fingers I have. His voice is slightly different for some reason because he just doesn't have the same uh uh like. Right. Well, it's not all molars anymore. Now yeah. you've got like incisors and crap. Ah, ah! How's your human? How's your human mouth feel? I don't like it. It's ah, it's not long enough. How would you even get this into a feedback? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and while while Astarok is uh, is dancing around, uh, Sophia the crab is no longer frightened. Um, appears to have calmed down, and um, Alestra will drop Polymorph on uh, Sophia. Okay. Um, I I kind of like take a breath, and I go, "That was that was not funny. You know that I don't like it when you do that to me. It is not okay." I Sorry, thought it was a little okay. funny. Well, it was uh. funny what you did. What you did was hysterical because humans are weird. But <laughs> they're so hey. strange. Sorry, Liddy. I apologize. I mean, you're a little weird, but but you're 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 cool. Um, Good weird. Um, well, I mean, you're human, so okay. Um, oh, that is interesting because I was just thinking about something, and I I go, you know, what's cool that I can do with this thing, and I pull out the the Biden of Thassa, the 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 Kala, and I tap it down on the ground. And uh, I need uh, Alestra oh, to no. make a um, a poly. I need I need her to make us a, a, a DC save. Um, I guess it's it's also what what is it? What is the save against polymorph? Wisdom. Wisdom. Okay, so she needs to make a wisdom saving throw. All right, I'm gonna make it in the roll twenty so that you don't think I'm futzing okay. on this. Fair. Yeah. And they get, she gets plus four to wisdom saves. Okay. How did I do? I don't see I don't the roll. See it. I don't see the roll. Oh, there it is. 16. It, looking for an 18. Ooh, so, I miss. That is, that is, that is the, uh, that is the, um, oh wait, yeah. That is the. The DC is 18, yeah. Yeah, DC 18, because that is, that is the DC of the staff as opposed to of Sophia. Oh. Uh, and mm. I cast true polymorph on. Ooh. 
on her. Oh, uh, no. So let's see what uh, that means. Uh, That's permanent, <laughs> that right? Is, uh, only if I want it to be. Um, no, to I, have, I have to concentrate for up to an hour. Yeah. Um, okay. Choose one creature or non magic object you can see within range. You transform a creature into a different creature. Uh, the spell lasts for duration or until the uh, target drops for zero hit points. Uh, no effect. If you turn a creature into another creature, the form can be any kind you choose. I think that it's permanent if I choose it to be. I think it has okay. to be. I'm trying to figure out what the, there is. There is something about this. Um, if you concentrate on it for the full duration, it becomes permanent. Right. Yeah, for the hour. Um, but right, I so turn. What, what... Now the limitation of the staff is that it does have to be a a creature that has an innate swimming speed. Um, so I I think that I would probably turn her into a lobster because she's my lobster. Okay. Um, because I I think I would turn her into a lobster. Um, only because no, you know what? I turn her into a seal because I don't okay. want to give her something that has like claws that come after me. Um, but yeah, so she has um. Yeah. So and I if I concentrate for more than an hour, she's like this permanently and. I'm not going to do that to her, but I think it's hysterical that I polymorphed her. Yep. So I'm going to hold on to it for just like a little while longer than she's happy with. Um, she is going to... Huh? 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 I got to say, you all have a weird relationship. <laughs> <laughs> she is a seal. She is a seal is going to try to bite you. Okay. She rolls a six. So she takes a she nip at your bite. foot. <laughs> and then she goes and sits in the corner. And thinks about what she did. He's not pleased. Uh, All right. I think I think I would probably hold it for as long as it was fun for me, or until Celia's like, "Okay, mom, yeah. stop." Celia's Celia's just like, "All right, that's this is this happens every time." They, I'm sorry, everybody. This is happens every time. That they, I have never been able to do this before, and I am loving it. I think it's hysterical. I get why she does it now. I totally right. get why she does <laughs> it. Right? I mean, it's kind of fun. Yeah. You know, I know that it's it's not the She's not exactly a good person, but you know, it's it's fun. She has her qualities. She has her qualities. Mm. Anyway, you should let her go. Should I? I mean, you can make it last another 30 seconds or whatever. I, I think I hold it for as long as I can before it starts to feel like it might get cruel, and then I I undo okay. it. Yeah. Ha ha! I mean ha. I, my bag. I won't Hilarious. say this isn't entertaining, but uh uh, don't you have a, a kid that you're we're supposed to find now? Right. We should probably yeah. go check on the boat. Uh, follow me. And I'm, I'm going to use these weird meat feet with little fingers on them to head back to the boat because yeah, I'm you, a regular human man. Do you want me to drop that? Or are you good? Uh, it wears off eventually, right? Yeah. Uh, probably. Let's, let's have some fun with it then. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she'll lead you back to the boat. Would she the have boat? remained concentrated on that spell when I polymorphed her? Oh, right. She would have had to drop. I think for the fun yeah. of it. I think for Whatever. the fun of it. <laughs> and it's the Swine Island. This is her place. She can do what she wants. Yeah. So As she's... Astrock gets back on the ship, it starts to like wear off and it goes, oh, right. oh right. You get back to the ship. It is fully mended. The maiden head of, of Grandma is uh, replaced and fixed. You see uh, three people, two men and a woman, who are putting uh, finishing touches on the ship. Uh... Two of them look vaguely wolf-like, and one of them looks vaguely lion-like. Uh, and they are putting the finishing touches on the boat. They wipe their hands and say, all done, boss. All right, thanks. Um, looks like the moray is ready to set sail again. Um, good luck uh, on, 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 on saving Odexes and, uh, and all the rest of the adventures. Yeah. Thanks for visiting. Hey. Hey, it was it was good to see you, and I I, I wasn't kidding when I said you look good. I, I do miss you. I hope that you're well. It was good to see you, and thank you all for coming. Also, um, she'll like hold out arms and accept hugs from whoever wants. No, uh, sure, why not? Uh, yeah. get nice, to give a nice hug, big hug from Tutu. I'll give a um, hug. And uh, take some take some snacks for the road. I've got dough circles for you and Tansy dough circles. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, at the end of the dock, uh, Solea and uh, uh, Alestra wave as you take off towards your next adventure to save 
Uh, Odex. I, I would at least ask Celia if she wants to come. I know she probably won't, oh. but I think I would try to entice her to come. But I appreciate that. Um, my place no. is, is here for now. I know. I understand. You you and your mother have your thing. It's fine. Um, yeah. But you know I'm that not an, I'm not an adventurer. I know. Can't can't blame a uh, can't blame me for trying. for trying. So, all right. Well, I love you. I love you both. And thank you for not turning my friends into animals and um, eating them. And yet, and um, have a good Come one. Come back anytime. We, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I get on the boat at that point. And they wave as they fade into the distance and you head towards your next adventure. And that's where we'll call the episode this week. All right. Okay. All right. Yay. Yay. That was a good episode, everybody. Good job. There were pigs. There were pigs. <laughs> I like that Astarok's impression of a human is kind of also his impression of an angel. <laughs> it's like the same. Yeah. Right. They both have weird meat feet. So, you know. I was really hoping you were going to do a Lucian impression. That's what I was hoping you were going to do. <laughs> In retrospect, that would have been a great idea. Yeah, pretty good. Just because I want to hear you do your impression of Garoth. Um, <laughs> good, good job saving the boat. Good job finding all the things. That was great. Uh, and we'll see you all next week. What? Uh, tell the folks at home where they can find you. Let Ashlyn go first because I think she has to jet. Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Twitter at Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on the Instagrams as Rar, it's Ashlyn. Wow, going first makes you feel like I'm forgetting everything. Um, <laughs> you can find me on my website if you ever want to check out my voiceover demos as uh, ashlynrose.com. And hold on to your seats because we have some really amazing, cool stuff that we've worked really hard on coming out in the next few weeks for the Command Zone. So if you know us on Twitter, or follow us on YouTube. Again, some really, really cool things we're very excited to share with you very soon, and it's the reason why we've been very busy. So look forward to that. Awesome. And I'm Jordan Pigeon. You can follow me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. Also, check out the old uh, Saving Throw show stuff like Wild Cards and stuff that I'm on, which is fun. And I will also uh, just second Ashlyn's uh, uh, admonition that you should follow uh, at CommandCast on Twitter and other things like that because uh, I'm, I'm just very excited about the stuff that we are going to be putting out soon. Uh, I'm Danielle Radford. You can find me at Twitter on uh, Danielle Radford. You can find me on Instagram at Danielle underscore Radford. And you can watch Honest Trailers. Um, I'm one of the people that helps make them and it makes me really happy when you guys watch them. So that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody, you can find me on Twitter at Riley J. Silverman, or you can find me on Instagram at Riley Silverman. And I think that what I will promote this week, uh, it's, it's a few weeks out still, but on uh, May 3rd, I believe, first, first Monday in May, I am DMing a, uh, a, a one of the games as part of Jasper's Game Week. And so for those of you who don't know, it is a marathon of, of games that are helping to raise uh, money for, for suicide prevention and things like that. So I'm really excited about it. So I, I am running a game that night, normally around when we normally would be doing this show or Dice X Machina. So it's about the same time slot, I believe. And uh, I... I don't think I don't know if my auctions for my seats at my table are available yet or not, but keep an eye out for those if you have ever wanted to play at a table that I have GM'd because that should be available. If not available now, it should be available soon. Something you can bid on. So check that out. Like Jasper yeah. Game. J Jake was actually able to play uh, with me at a table for Jasper's Game Day uh, last round. So oh, yeah, it's cool. really fun. And it's nice. for a great cause. I'm excited awesome. about it. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ruben Bressler. You can follow me everywhere at M-O-X-R-E-U-B-Y. Those are all of the things. Um, looks like we're, uh, there isn't going to be a raid this evening, but feel free to keep watching Dungeons & Dragons from some of our friends at the Fantasy Network. Um, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week on The Broken Pact. Good night, everybody. <laughs>